<laughs> the darkness growing on me on XFM 104.9. Oh, it's all going well already, isn't it? The microphones fell apart. Carl shouting because he got headphones on. <laughs> His music's uh, uh, up too late. Canfield level. <laughs> God, he got pre out. Look at him giggling. He's, look at him. Look at him laughing. That's so funny because I got a letter here uh, from uh, who was it from? Um, Mike Hill, who sent me a little picture of a little Japanese fella, fella from a film who said looks like me and he does a little bit um but he says please can you make Carl laugh I've never heard him utter as much as a snigger and I'm worried he may have a genetic disorder well I mean he has got a genetic <laughs> disorder yeah. obviously but um he was giggling then I hope I hope uh, people right. heard you then look at his little face it was a joy oh, I love the things that make him happy but I love the fact just before the uh, the, the microphone came up and just before the record finished, he had his headphones on, the music was too loud and he was just shouting, Bowhouse is not working! <laughs> Bowhouse is not working! I have to play something else! I went and found Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. Listen, why isn't it working? Look at him giggling! Look, he's lost it! Is he, is he going away? Is he, are you on drugs, Carl? What have you done? He's, he's tickled. Look at his little... He looks like one of those shaved monkeys. Look yeah. at his little wit. Oh my god, I've never seen a forehead glow. I know, it's extraordinary. Oh. And he's got that red shirt on as well, so the whole whole of him is just a big glowing... Carl, what are you trying? What are you putting in? Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Go on then. Hang on. Brilliant radio. Just, Dr. Fo I hope Dr. Fox is listening because I think he's eating his words right now, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> right, I, I think I've done it. Right. Well done. That's excellent. Right, what what, what Let's play Bauhaus now and let's try and compose ourselves. This is Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. <laughs> that worked. That worked, didn't it? So you panic over, calm, calm now, calm now. You are early soon, aren't you? Yeah. He's got. You got to go off early. Well, about about uh, about. How many holidays have you had? Because I only ever have time off when I'm working, like doing another job, like you know, filming or something. But you seem to have a lot of holidays, just like. And you were sick as well. You were just like because you had wet trousers, which is a little bit. Do do, do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because, you know, what I mean, if I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or because we. Yesterday we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing, and we got to uh, Manchester United and moaning, and that is that is the two we came I, up with. I don't with. know where you get the moaning thing. You're from. always whinging about what? Everything. What, when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't remember because well, we were in good mood. We were in good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And saying, can you edit this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's your job. <gasps> you could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why, but why, but why are you whinging? That's your job. And I did come in ten minutes before. It was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning. Mm. To even get started. I'm not, I'm not being dragged into this. You are always- I'm on my holiday now. Well, not yet. No, you're not on yet. You're still working. <laughs> well, this, this, that's what's funny. This isn't even work, right? And yet it should be. Compared to what I do in the week, this is a doddle. <laughs> well, it's because you're not putting any effort in, clearly. <laughs> Where are you going anyway? Where are you heading? Carmel. Yes? What's happening down there? Uh, well, there's a monkey world. <laughs> <laughs> you're excited about that. We don't, we don't see that. Probably go twice to that. Yeah. Whilst I'm down there. How long are you waiting for? Do the whole week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh... This is with your parents, isn't it? Yeah. Taking yeah. them out, taking them out. Your father, yeah. What do you think your father will be up to? What's, what's he going to be nicking on this holiday? Well, he's, uh, there's he's, a lot of tin in Cornwall. He's, since uh, they've shut the mines. <laughs> he's, uh, he's just called Suzanne, said they've got there, So it's a nice little place. Mm -hmm. uh, There'll be away. no towels when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you do? Pubs. What are you going to do? Just going to chill out and sort of like go to the pub and stuff? Yeah, like I say, I mean, all I've got planned is probably the, uh, probably Tuesday and Thursday at Monkey World. <laughs> Um <laughs> what, what, what about Wednesday? What, what are we thinking of Wednesday? Just wand wandering around? Just sort of think about, you know... What King Arthur and that. Where, where, he was down there, wasn't he? I don't know, but I told you something. Going? What town? I, I don't know, I don't know where it is. Susan sorted it out. Yeah, I don't she know, saw I don't that. Know. I, I on the phone to her saying, well pack them, pack two pairs. Poor woman, she's packing your bags for you. Yeah. Right. But, uh... Hey, you'd, you'd spend more time at home if Steve didn't come in at 10-2 with a rap record with, like, obscenities all over it. Yeah, well, we'll play that next week. Then. Well, you didn't even get the job done, that's the thing. <laughs> we can't even play it because you didn't get finishing time. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, that method man, if he doesn't stop effing and jeffing, it's the end <laughs> of his career. In my opinion. <laughs> well, <anyway. laughs> All this F that and uh, uh yo, yo, yo yo Jeff, I'm a Jeff myself. Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm hanging out with my Jeff. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> Jeff, and, you. And we know you can't put out the J word. 
on, yeah. on XFM. Oh, Mother Jeffer. Well, <laughs> so we haven't got that, but what we have got... Go on. Monkey News. We've still got a Monkey News, have we? That's sorted out, that's coming up. Yeah. Rockbusters. Yeah. Well, last chance. Definitely your last chance this time. You, you actually improved a little bit last week, you did a couple of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Same again this week. And, uh... Cheeky Freak? The yeah. controversial Cheeky Freak of the Week. Where Carl, um, finds, uh, a, a human being with, um, some sort of, uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity <coughs> or, you know. So, uh, and we talk about that in a, in a wry way. Do you think that, do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's, that's just it. It's never about taking the mickey out of someone, right? It's about, it's to make you think... I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are. A dwarf right? with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well... <laughs> we'll explain it to you. <laughs> that's the forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carrion. That's nice and retro. That's yeah. like end of the 70s Bowie. Mm. That's, that's great. Good. On XFM 104.9. That's just some of the records... That we've played so far. Do you know what I mean? You've had the darkness, you've had Bauhaus, it, it, it's like, can it get any better, Carl, do you think? Like I say, we've got monkey news coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so. Guess what? I lost 400 quid cash this week. Gambling? No. No, no, this, that's tragic. Uh, that, this is why it, it gutted me. It wasn't um, even on your gambling addiction. No, I, I had, uh, I had a photo shoot, I had the suit, right, and I'd, I'd claimed back some expenses and I'd, I'd had it in my pocket. And then when I took the suit, home, it must have fallen out in the street or the cab, <sighs> and I remembered it and, and I went to the, I went every pocket twice, and it was just the fact, I don't think about, oh god, that's terrible, that's a terrible blow, I think, oh god, if I had it back now, it would be free money. Yeah. If I suddenly found it now, I'd have 400 pounds that was just free money, and yeah. I had a little nap to get over it, and I was- <laughs> And you were fine. I was okay. But that's got- 400 pounds. Someone just found, what a gift that is. Oh. Just, I mean, untrustworthy. Was it in a money clip? Was it rolled no, up in a money clip? No, it was just literally 400 quid in an envelope. Oh, and that's so a that, treat. I know. Uh, see, I'd always hand it in. I genuinely would, unless I found it in a in the middle of a forest or something. <laughs> if it was in the street. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, because it, a bear dropped it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if I found it in a pub or a cab, I just hand yeah, it to anyone that you're in. through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But would, uh, I'd hand it in. Well, I, I am. But there's no way. If they found it in the street, there's no way they could do it. You know, it goes to the police station and it sits there for six months. But yeah, exactly. Well, it's not it's a waste of time. Pocket it. But um, I, because when I was younger, I remember being outside a post office once when I was about ten or twelve and finding a purse. And thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I opened it up, and there was some money in there, and a pension book, and so it was obviously an old lady. I, had an, I found an address, I sent it to her, and my mum said, you know, you've been so good there, you'll probably get a little reward. She'll probably send you a little reward. Nothing! I got maybe a thank you note, but no cash, no Mulan, nothing. Really? And I was livid, because I'd been told that I was going to get a reward. I thought, I've been a good Samaritan, nothing. So, many moons later, when I was at university, I learnt from that, and I, and this is, this is the most bizarre thing. It this was explains like, a lot, doesn't it, Carl? This is like the Mary Celeste. I went to uh, a cash point to put my, I thought, I can't get my card in here. And I realised there was already somebody's card in the machine, they put the code in, but, um, oh. but they, they, but then they just disappeared. They'd been kidnapped or something, so it was just there, waiting, sitting, said, what do you want to do? And it gave you a number of options. I thought, interesting. Steal? Or go to <laughs> yeah, heaven? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He went, oh dear, um. Yeah. <laughs> well, um. I pressed, uh, balance, just to check what their bank balance was. Unbelievable. It was a considerable sum of money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was not typical student debt. It was like, I think they were a foreign student, there was a lot of cash in there, a lot of Did money. Did you feel a slight bulge in your trousers when you saw the amount of money? I couldn't believe my life. <laughs> I thought to myself, <laughs> now then, I could just take that card out and hand it in, or I could teach them a small lesson. Right and maybe give myself a reward, because last time I did that, I didn't yeah. get a reward. So if I give myself thirty pounds, mm. then I'll take the card out. Thirty? Give myself thirty yeah. You didn't really? Pounds. Well, I thought that's a good reward, and I and I went in, I handed the card in, I took Steve, that Steve! And that's... that's a little reward for me, and I'll tell you this, don't think it's evil, because I went in and I bought everyone a drink. Uh, well, brilliant! Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them I got the money free. Well done. Excellent. So, so I, I, probably gangsters are quite generous. With well, the money they've stolen from other people. Yes, but someone's negligence, Rick, has lent- the, the, well, the thing is this, Steve, right? I, do, I, I, I believe it except the buying people a drink, Carl, what do you think? Well, <laughs> I kind of thought that when he said it, but then I thought, but they'll be buying one him back. So he's still- that, So in a way he's still a winner. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a winner. 
in that situation, including the student, because frankly, if there had been a, a less scrupulous person who found it, they'd have probably helped themselves to a considerable I, sum. I, I cannot believe he did that. There was thousands and but thousands of pounds in there. What if it was, uh, what if Beadle had jumped out and slapped you with his little claw and said, we've been filming this merchant? Well, what, so what? How old were you then? I don't know, 19, 20. Would you do it again or was it just to get the world back for the old lady's purse? Um. Possibly do it again, yeah. You're, jo you're joking! Well, you've got to think of it this way, you've got to think of it as there was a lot of money in there and someone less scrupulous than me would have taken a fortune. They'd have cleaned them out. Whereas I just took a small reward which I thought was more than enough for someone's negligence. <laughs> and I've returned the card, they've got the card back, everything's fine. Think of I someone else, I could have gone on a spending spree, I could have been buying stuff, all sorts. Yeah, but it wasn't yours at all. Yes, but it it's- they probably would have given me a reward. And because, you know, sometimes people forget or, you know, they don't give you a reward, I thought I should yeah, take it myself. your dad from nicking a loaf of bread out of a phone box. Yeah, but that's because it's for old people, geriatrics and stuff. How do you know how old was your people you were robbing from? It it's a student, it was on a student hungry. campus. Hmm. Mm. Wow. I think it was more, I thought it was excellent behaviour. God, that's good incredible. That, that is, that's showing another side to him, isn't it? What would you have done, Carl, in that situation? And tell the truth. I, I might have helped myself a little bit. <laughs> There you are! I tell you what, this is helping no, yourself a bit! Like you say, just sort of, you know, send it in back and sort of say, you know... If you find a pound coin in the street and you can be bothered to bend over for it, then have it. But someone's cash point card or, uh, personal belongings... I'd let them know though, did you send it to them and say, I've, I've you know, I've service charge included, I've <laughs> sort of took that out already. <laughs> no, I gave, I handed it in to the, uh... <laughs> Let them know. I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, you're lucky here, right? I just took, uh, I'd probably take 20, actually. Because okay. that's just like one note. Sorry, you, sorry, right, okay. You are winding me up. No, no, I'm not. I mean, not for, for once. I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, <laughs> right? Is, well. is, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm careful. You're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful. Absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look after the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, all right? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't help that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal <laughs> with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- I've got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Blair Rickman. Blair, out of time on XFM. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, talking to money, Steve, L look at this, right, it's in the paper, a wife has had her beauty insured for a hundred thousand pound in case she grows ugly and her husband walks out. Uh, Nicole Jones, 26, of Chipping Sodbury, Gloucestershire, says 200 pounds a year, that's why it pays 200 pounds a year for a policy. She arranged it um, as a present for her husband Richard. Her beauty will be judged by a panel of builders. <laughs> <laughs> so... Have they been selected beforehand, do you think? Do the I don't know. know who they are? I but assume I they're mean, complete I, strangers. So suppose, like, in 30 years time, he looks at her and goes, oh, you've lost your looks. She goes, well, have I? Yeah. He goes, well, yeah. <laughs> well, have I? They call in the panel. Some girls go, <laughs> Yeah. All right, get them out for that. Well, never mind that. It's your, yeah, she's lost it. Right, well, hundred grand. Well, they, hundred grand coming your way. They stand on some scaffolding. Yeah, she <laughs> walks by. Yeah, and if they will whistle, that is amazing. Uh, do you think they give her a quote first? Yeah. What if they say, actually, love, you've got nothing to lose. You're not. You're yeah. not. You're not a oil painting anyway. Yeah. We can't come round and judge your beauty for at least. I mean, weeks. that is just open to abuse, isn't yeah. it? A hundred thousand pounds. Because I remember, um, uh, in, in Japan, uh, they're mad on golf, right? And if you get a hole in one, you buy everyone, you throw a party. And it was costing them like thousands and thousands of pounds. So they were insuring themselves against getting a hole in one. And so miraculously, <laughs> everyone was going, I've got a hole in one. Did he? Yeah. 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 Paying out insurance. I mean, they, they could be in that together, couldn't they? It's they're bizarre. not. I'm sure they're not. 
Well, they're, she, they're, yeah. they're probably more honest than you two that would take 20 quid out of a cash point. But, you know. No, 30. 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. I, the, it's, I like the wording, though. A wife. Yeah, a wife. The word wife. <laughs> the word wife. It's a. I don't know why it makes. I, I just find this is an odd word. This is. Hello, this is my wife. Hello, uh, the wife. Yeah, the wife. My wife. It just seems a word that you have to say if you're 60. You go, yeah, I know. Have you met the wife? And even then, ironically, unless someone. You don't know exactly. Are you married? Yeah, um, my wife is from. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. But it's but the wife. Go, people go, oh, better get back. I'm meeting the wife for dinner. <laughs> Especially when you know well, them. I, I uh, yeah, I remember bumming into someone, a friend of mine, in, uh, somewhere at a party. To a couple that I knew, and I'd known both of them before they got married. In fact, I'd known her, I think, longer. And he and I said, da, 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 where's so and so? And, uh, and he went, oh, uh, the wife will be along in a minute. And it's just this notion that, but what, you use her name. <laughs> I know, I know, she I is. know, she is. I know <laughs> her name. <laughs> is that well, the I used to call her by that. Why? It's like someone going, you know I'm married. Yeah, you, know, exactly. you know I'm married. It's in like the, showing In what? the eyes of God, we are wed. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, so that makes me more of an of, adult than it's you. It's the ownership. Yeah, it's like going, you know I'm a real man. I've yeah. got a wife, and here she is. She's uh, my wife. I find it, there's the words I, f I find hard to say. <laughs> Um, in a shop, I could never ask for wet ones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I if I have to go and ask for wet ones, I won't bother. Or toilet duck. Another one I probably I never say Snickers. <laughs> Why? Don't know. I think as I grew up with Marathon. Yeah. See, I still this is so pathetic. I still get embarrassed buying uh, toilet paper. Really? We you know if you go into like your tw twenty four hour shop just around the corner, not supermarket, big shop. But if you just go in there, you just maybe buying some milk. Yeah. A chocolate bar. Because it's like they know what you're up to. No. They, no, they, but they know you're going to use it to, you know, when you're, you're going to the lavatory at some point. It's sort of, it's too intimate. But you, exactly, they, you just go, I know what you're thinking, I'll be using this after masturbation. <laughs> thus saving all embarrassment. It goes with the porn bag I've just walked Alice Costello, Alison, from way back <laughs> on XFM 104.9, a retro cut. Indeed. Wow. Up to the modern day, the newest game show around, Rockbusters. Whee! Isn't there a jingle? It would probably be something like, oh, Rockbusters. It would be very, <laughs> along yeah, those along this line. I've, I've got to work it out, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go without it for now and then okay. we'll be on ready next week. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the prizes, once again, sourced by Carl Pilkington. I think it's, um, been in the prize bag before, Carl, but I could see it back. The best air guitar <laughs> album in the world ever. Do they uh, keep sending it back? Is that just one? <laughs> is that, is it, it comes through the window, tied to a brick. Uh, actually, there's a lot of good stuff on there. There's, uh, the Kinks. Knopfler? Is there Knopfler? Knopfler, I believe, is on it's there. It's clapped in Rex. anywhere to be seen. Definitely clapped, so I would have thought, per a deep purple. We got Quo, Skinnerd, Mac, uh, Snake <laughs> is there, Straits, excellent. And, uh, yeah. yeah, there's all sorts on there, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is always an odd choice, but fair enough. This is the, uh, current album by the Yardbirds. <laughs> their first studio album in 35 years. So, uh, the new music stage in XFM, giving away that. X, I suppose it's new music in, in, in some ways. Um, a Smash Hits compilation, we got stuff on there. It's, uh, uh it's Curiosity Killed the Cat, it's all the, uh, the old favourites. Plus two DVDs, uh, Columbo. What which, Columbo? Uh, it's got a couple of classic Columbo episodes there. Suitable for framing. One of the best, um, TV programmes of all time. Why do I get- yeah. you can always tell immediately who the villains are. Suitable for framing, I'm assuming that's some kind of art dealer, yeah. maybe an artist. Candidate for crime, presumably some kind of, um, presidential political, or yeah. political candidate. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that'd be good, I'm sure, Columbo. I mean- Stab woman. <laughs> that was my <laughs> <Yeah>. favourite episode. <laughs> St stab lady wife. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure why- who would buy a Columbo DVD like you can't find it on TV? It's on now. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> it's on I guarantee, because someone could maybe, uh, email in, is there an episode of Columbo on now anywhere that got cable or digital? I think it will <laughs> Almost be. Almost certainly. But it is great. And the other uh, DVD here is Cruise of the Gods, which was the, um, the one-off TV kind of film, comedy film that was on at Christmas, featuring Rob Brydon and Steve Bryden, Coogan. Coogan. Uh, uh, it's good. Williams. So, uh, yeah, there's a few gifts there, not, not, not bad, not bad right, at all. Right, now we uh, get to the, uh, to the, the real deal. deal. Okay, okay this, 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 what, this is what everyone tunes in for. This is Monkey News, I think. Not, right, not, well, not the music. Um, go on. Well, here we go, then. Yeah. Three, uh, cryptic clues and well, that, and it's worth really it out. cryptic, but. Easy as that. Email well, in. It's, uh, yeah. Email in. All right. Well, what's the email address? Ricky.Gervais at exfm.co.uk. Well, don't say that I know it or care. I think, yeah. So the first one, uh, he's got American coins all down his spine. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> he's got American coins all down his spine. What what band's that? What artist is it? What is it? In. What does it begin with? What? N. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, I've got it already. Right, That's in. rubbish, too easy. Yeah, right, go on second next. one. Jeremy Beadle, uh, has got arthritis. Right, Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. Yeah. That's the second clue. The, uh, initials there, S-L-F. Right, S-L-F. Jeremy Beadle's, uh, got a little bit of arthritis. <laughs> and, uh, the <laughs> third one, a Foxy, Shipman, and a country western singer on a merry-go-round. S D, right? So Foxy Shipman and some country western singer having a go on a merry go round. The initial S D, right? So email in Ricky Dot <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued with that one. I'm genuinely intrigued with that one. I'm I like the fact there's a certain whiff of controversy about it <laughs> because Shipman is mentioned. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, a little dear. bit edgy there. So uh, that's that's the three. He's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? As well, Shipman. Yeah, yeah. I think my mum's mum used to use him. Okay, let's play a record. Well, you want to play a record or play some adverts if you fancy some ads? Oh, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather add adverts, <laughs> well, yeah. I've got, got some for you. <laughs> Placebo, this picture on XFM 104.9. Steve? Yes? I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier, because Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Oh, are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. <laughs> but why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> right, just do it, just get on with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Look, look yeah. charity work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known that it was like. Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, there's a bit of a coincidence because I paid yeah. for it anyway, and it's happened to fall on right. on Father's Day, mm. right? Don't and my dad's hard. Not don't, that don't, don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were, I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything." Um. Because he hates it with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, sounds, a bit, sounds a bit stingy, that. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right. It's just uh, because fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? <laughs> but the the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing when she. Oh, f sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Christ. God. So when? Yeah. When? Carl, when, what? What? What do you mean? What no, do you mean? That's that's what he said. He said, oh, I nearly swore then because I was uh, you surprise me all the time. No, I'm, I'm but just, that is incredible. Sorry, what I don't understand what you're talking about. All the flowers that were sort of sold that day. Right. What right. for people to leave as a commemoration of Yeah, they, they they made a made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right. So what so are you, you saying? saying so you're saying he was just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> what whether about what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your, with your roast when's dinner. When's that on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. Right, 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 quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's like you were saying about the cards, you know, on <laughs> Father's Day and that. It's, it's, it's just a bit, too much a bit of a weird. Too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph. Sure. <laughs> yeah. On how the companies were doing, then suddenly. <laughs> yeah. <that's what> I <laughs> mean. yeah. But then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there, and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah, sure. But uh, no, that's, that's 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 all I'm saying. I'm just you know, because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I like I like spending money in that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was in W. H. Smith's. Yeah. Oh, classy. Yeah. The, what was the, it? Uh, was it? Was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> it? <laughs> was, it a th- was it a thirtieth? No, I was I was getting a. Uh, was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway because I'm yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a who, is it, who, who is it who said Father's Day? They love a, love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports, yeah. right, and mm. mini bars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the the, the the small Toblerone is for the mini bar in a hotel, yeah. three star upwards, mm. and the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big is, Toblerone is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to um, you know. Uh, Chanel number no. five, Toblerone, <laughs> yeah. and a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of you know some Toblerones, I, I mean, I I will eat Toblerone. Well, I, yeah. I think very much the same uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, that you don't want, yeah, you know, duty free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, d- in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies were behind the death of Diana. No, well, well, I, Maybe I could say that on air as well, just to save any complaints. I'll tell you what though, <laughs> talking about fag packets and that, do you know, like now, they've got, uh, they've got, if you have these, they'll do you in sort of thing yeah, on yeah. the front now. They've got these special stickers on them. Yeah. Saw a thing in a magazine the other day, <laughs> in Brazil, it's got like pictures of ill people on them. Blimey. That is It's powerful. gone really, uh, hardcore over there. That's good, isn't it? But I mean, uh, to be fair, what more can they do? I mean, there are fag packets now that say these will kill you and people are still smoking them. I mean, yeah. I don't know what they could, I don't think it, I don't think the message well, is getting through. You could ban them all together, I suppose, if, if they it, it seems weird to, uh, sort of like, you might as well sell guns and go, careful, you can kill people yeah. with these. Well, ban them then. Wow, just be <laughs> careful. Let's shoot, have your eye out with that. This is poison. This is poison. These are really, really mental poison drugs. You know those people with the, you ever see them in the street, uh, they're selling fags, duty free obviously, they're just selling on the street. You know, have you ever seen these guys? Yeah, I, yeah. I walk up and they finish your road lock because yeah. I'm near my place. And uh, all these people, they're just, and they're sort of looking a bit shifty and then they just, they just think that you're maybe a smoker. They just, uh, oh yeah, yeah, fags, and they'll open their jacket and it literally will be like something from, you know, the 1940s. It won't they'll go have, to you though, do they? No, smoking, it's it's stun- 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 growth. They know you must have never had a fag in your life. Um, but you know, I might be buying them as a gift or something because I'm quite a generous guy. <laughs> 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 and but it struck me, I was chatting with my friend about, you know, there seems to be there are certain people who are very low, maybe they, they, they have trouble getting work or maybe they, um, you know, they're, they're immigrants who've not landed on their feet and they've, they, they've had trouble, you know, and so there's a couple of jobs they can do. It seems to me there's the flag selling, there's those people I know it's on Oxford Street who bend a piece of wire into the shape of your name. I mean, what kind of a gift is that, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. It's like, oh, it's like they're literally giving them out. Or you can de- well, you can have the, the bending the name, you can be selling those things that you throw at the wall and they, they sliver down. At Dover? Yeah. What, 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 what are you doing? Yeah, uh, you I'm, doing? A, I'm a, uh, trained carpenter. Right. You can you write really small on a piece of rice? I could try. Could you write those names on a piece of rice? I could try. It's quite tricky, but do what you think about, you can What do about it? the rest of your family? <laughs> well, that one's only two, but he could be trained. He's got smaller fingers. Okay. Do you want to, um, to sell some knocked off perfume? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we'd like to apologise for any <laughs> inadvertent racism, suggestion that Lady Diana was killed by flower companies, or that Steve makes a habit of stealing from cash points. What about... XFM 104.9. A picture of Rick Waller on the front of the bargain bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, and of course, Carl Pilkington. Now, people come up to me and they say, Is Carl for real? And I go, What do you mean? He goes, Well, they want to say, Is he that stupid? And the answer is yes, right? Some people think, that he's putting on. Some people think that he's a character that we've invented, yeah. like we've got an actor in, like he's a Gareth Keenan or a Tim or yeah. something, and I go- That no, we've scripted. He exactly, probably. yeah. No, he's absolutely real, aren't you, Carl? I go, where did he come from? Well, just to tell the story, we came here and well, I, I was much too important to run the desk myself this time round, so they just gave us a tea boy. Steve came in with you, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you remember that? Well, it, Steve knows, I don't want to keep going over it, but no, it's sure. just the way he looks, it's just <laughs> 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 Were you taken aback? 
A little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, right. And, uh, and he's just developed into my favourite thing. I also said that you get bored with, like, you know, battling tops or, you know, pets sometimes. I mean, I love, I love my cat, but he's not as, you know, Colin, cat. Yeah. Colin, Colin. Actually, um, Kyle's away it, next week. Is he available to run the day? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, he's not as, he's actually not as intelligent as Kyle, and that's the truth. He's not, you know. Well, he's, marginally. Yeah, but, um, but, uh, and then in the week, he's like one of these little Tamagotchi toys, Carl, because I have to phone him every day and keep his interest up. Yeah. Like, I'd give him an interesting fact. And, um, I got a book out and I found out that I'd call Carl like that. And I thought this was a great fact, right? Um, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. Right? I thought that was incredible. Sure. Okay. So I phoned him and I said, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. He went, what's it do after that? I went, what? <laughs> he said, well, how fast can it run when it's adult? I went, well, even faster. He went, oh. I thought we could just do it then, but then it sort of lost it. I went, what are you talking about? I went, you know, that's incredible. A two-day old gazelle can run f He went, well, no, that's what they do. I went, what? He went, that's what they do, isn't it? I went, what do you mean? It's two days old, right? He went, yeah, but a one-day old fly can fly. I'm 30 and I can't fly. It's not <laughs> yeah. what I do, right? And I went, right. He went, a jellyfish can hold its breath underwater for hours. I went, it doesn't hold its breath, does it? It hasn't got lungs. So he went, what? And then I had him. He went, what do you mean? I said, well, they don't breathe, do they? Went, what do they do? I went, well, they get oxygen directly from the water by osmosis straight into their cells. And it just went quiet. And I went, a two-day-old gazelle, and he went, yeah. yeah. I, do you know what I mean? Interesting I, about the jellyfish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I he, was, he was looking up osmosis, <laughs> and then he was thinking about the jellyfish. But I just think, I mean, if Bambi's anything to go by, this little gazelle spends a whole day trying to stand, and the next day it enters the derby. And you don't <laughs> think that's- amazing. You don't think that's incredible? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know the sort of things I find incredible. Go on. Um, mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny ah, objects. Kettles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. Well, uh. listen, listen. Remember the time when I tell you about the the uh, baby that had a baby. The well, baby that had a baby. The baby that had a baby. Yeah. It's happened again. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Well, it, it didn't was happen in, the first time. It was in the papers, I think, on uh, on Monday. In all the uh, tabloids. So it's a twin where. W one has, has- has grown and the other one is still at a fetal level. No, it wasn't it? though, it had grown. He was saying to his mum, uh... Who was saying to his mum? The little kid, he was seven years old. And he kept he? saying, yeah. yeah he was <laughs> and he was pregnant? Yeah. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? And, uh, he was saying to his mum, oh, God, I don't feel well, and, like, his belly was all swollen, and they thought he'd just been eating cake or whatever. And, uh, he was saying, I can feel something moving about, and they were like, stop messing about, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, eventually, I think he was in gym at school. In gym? What, gym was <laughs> pregnant with him? <laughs> oh was, no, he was, he was like at, a Russian he, doll. He was, at, he was at school, right? Just about to do, uh, sit-ups or whatever they do at school, right? Yeah. And, uh, Flew out across the room. teacher goes, you're a bit fat. You look a bit pregnant. And, uh, so the best teacher to the doctors took him, said, uh, you're seven years pregnant or something like that. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you what, know, what, 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 or something like that. No, You're no, seven no. years pregnant. <laughs> or something like that. You <laughs> sit in the doctor. <laughs> Carl, why don't you think uh, about what you say before you say it? See, see the reaction I get. Now the gazelle, I didn't get excited like that. <laughs> <laughs> seven years pregnant. Send it in. If someone's online at the moment, just having a look around, it'll be on. It'll be. It happened on Monday or Tuesday. Because I told you at the pub quiz, didn't I, Steve? I said but to I don't, you, you, another you, baby's had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, yeah. Whatever. Well, I just thought you were talking nonsense as ever. Well, we'll find out. You're well, seven yeah. years pregnant. Yeah. You're a fool. Play a record. Well, we've still got stuff coming up. Monkey news? Rockbusters answers. We'll have to yeah. get that out of the way soon, because we've got well, to get that. Out of it. Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Yep. Brilliant. <laughs> America by Simon and Garfunkel on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais and I understand I'm about to read my words, Steve. Well, once again, there's always someone <laughs> and uh, it looks like it's Mike Lamb who it has come to cause L L Lambo's let me down then. Doctors have removed a four pound baby boy from the stomach of his seven year old twin brother. Yeah. Alan well, Jan so, so, yeah. twin brother, was yeah. born with the freak fetus growing inside him. For seven years it lived like a parasite until a school doctor became alarmed about Alan and Jan's bulging tummy and took him to hospital. Surgeons who gave him a scan operated immediately, unaware that the baby was attached to the boy's blood vessels and still alive. They saved Alan Jan from certain death but knew the eight inch fetus was doomed. So there we are. Um, boy pregnant with his own twin brother by Barbara Davis. That was in the mirror, apparently. 
So, uh, I've read on and all the facts are right. They, they took him to school, the parents uh, didn't realise. And that isn't even, uh, this week's Freak of the Week. <laughs> I mean, that's that's still that to for free. Come. You've got that, you can have that. <laughs> that's the free freak of the week. <laughs> free freak but of the that's, week. You know, that's giveaway, that's like 13.5% extra. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you might get with hairspray or something. So that, I mean, if that's, if that's just the throwaway freak of the week, there are two freaks of the weeks there. If that's, if those two figure out, I can't wait to see what the actual freak of the week is that people are paying for. <laughs> is it incredible, Carl? I'll tell you what, something else you can have for free. Go on. Uh, another sort of freaky thing, right? I was watching this, uh, this program in the week. Right? What? Uh, I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is, it, it was about, uh, I just saw, I saw this little fella on it, right? What do you and, mean little uh, fella? He, he was doing this history thing. Oh. Right? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, no. So, is this that he's found out that a Viking was a bit like him? Yeah, that's it, yeah. D he was boneless or something, or he's- Well, that's, that's the weird thing. What do you think of that, Steve? He's what? He's boneless? No, he was called Harry the Boneless or something. Yeah, but you know what you're gonna get there, don't you? <laughs> that's what I mean, I always have a- have a name, <laughs> Elephant Man, you know. <laughs> Harry the- Harry the Boneless. Where is he? I, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm meeting- I'm meeting someone, uh, waiter, um, what's his name? He's called Harry the Boneless. He's over there flapping around. Yeah. 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 He's remorse. over there in the bucket, having noodles. <laughs> that's what I mean. But- do you reckon you could do that? Do you reckon you could have your bones taken out? <laughs> I love talking to him! He's brilliant! He's like talking no, to a five-year-old. I was asking Suzanne when she was watching it and she was like, ask me later. Yeah, brilliant. She was, she wanted to know about, you what know. What did you, you said, you were, you were watching this programme about history, right, about Vikings. Like that, you turned yeah. to your girlfriend and said, do you reckon you could have your bones taken out? Yeah. I love that. I mean, think? that's- that, that is why you are my favourite What do you thing? mean you think you can have your bones taken out? <laughs> Firstly, why would you have your bones taken out? If you've well, only got a small flat or something, <laughs> and there isn't much room. Yeah. Right? And what I mean is, would all your organs still do the stuff? No! no. They wouldn't. You'd just be mush. Listen, I'll tell- I'll teach you something now, right? The skeleton, right? Spam. Yeah? Support. Movement. Anchorage. No, support. Protection, anchorage, movement, spam. That's what, that's what the bones do. Yeah? You couldn't stand up. You wouldn't be protected because they protect his rib cage, skull, of course. Anchorage, everything holds onto it. Every muscle is tethered to pull against something, like a crane, a pulley system, so you wouldn't be able to move at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you know what I mean? So you'd just, you'd, you'd be in a bucket. There'd be nothing, you, well, you'd die immediately, obviously. No, you can't have your bones taken out, Carl. I mean, I mean, why do you need to ask that question? Sorry, um, uh, but Boneless Bob, or whatever his name was. Harry, <laughs> Harry. Harry the Boneless. <laughs> he, he presumably <laughs> didn't have any bones, I mean, that's why he had that name, obviously. No, he did. No, he had, he's got the name. Yeah, exactly. No, he was just... <laughs> he was... <laughs> um, I've had an email here from Graham, old Ken Rowe, he just says, I had a dream about Carl last night. I had a dream about Carl last night, can I sue? <laughs> I have no idea what he looks like, apart from the boldness, and yet he turns up in the middle of my dream. I don't need this, it's harassment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people are having dreams about you now, Carl. Uh, you actually- it's like you're one of the- something that cre was created by the Brothers Grimm. I, I've got- I, I had a dream. You know when you used to, people used to have anxiety dreams, they had like an exam or something, like, you suddenly go to school and you realised, oh my god, you didn't have, um, uh, your trousers on, or, uh, I had an anxiety dream, I assume, we, we started off an anxiety dream about the office, about filming the office, and we had to, we had to film in HMV, but someone hadn't cleared it, and so we, we had to try and an R price, and I went, oh, okay, that'll do. And as I was walking there, right, um, I didn't have any shoes on, which is like an anxiety dream, but I looked down and I went, so what? Yeah. So I'm so lazy now, I think, Rick, even ang anxiety dreams don't kick in to me. I'm not sure that's a dream, that, I think that's just a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I would be at all surprised if you, uh... <laughs> Turned out with the film with the yeah, office with no shoes. We don't need shoes. When we were originally doing the pilot for the very first series, um, obviously Ricky's the main character, he's in it all the time, it's obviously important, he's had a big chance to get something made for TV, you know, it's gonna launch our careers, and, um, I turn up on the Monday, he's twisted his ankle. He has to be wheeled around in a wheelchair, because he went out jogging, stepped on a tin can in the street, and fell over. Who left that there? Like a 40-year-old man with brittle bone disease, he just <laughs> twisted his ankle and he was out of action. It was pathetic. Yeah, that was the pilot. Absolutely pathetic. But I still turned up, Carl. That's the sort of trooper I am. Well, yeah, but you moaned the whole week. Wait, wait. Well. I didn't like him to go around in a wheelchair, did I? Yeah. It's not pleasant, you know, but 
in a, in a weird way, it taught me all the problems. <laughs> do you have anxiety dreams, Carl? Do you ever lie awake worrying about stuff? Uh, cause I have a lot going on in my head. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. very- I, I, I don't have- like, <laughs> What do you do? Rent it out to people? <laughs> <laughs> Is it two monkeys swinging in a tie at the moment? Yeah. I just don't have that many dreams. No. Uh, <laughs> I love- I love that! I love the fact you don't have that many dreams! Well, you haven't had a decent night's sleep since you were 14, according to you. 12. Really? Yeah, so, I I, know, I know what you meant- I know what you mean, though, now, when sometimes you're so tired, because I'd forgotten that. You're so tired and you think, well, I'm so- I'm so glad I don't have to go out tonight. I'm gonna go and just lay on the couch and then go to bed. Yeah. Have but, you had one sleep? Anxiety you know, like dreams, I do have them periodically, yeah. It used to be a lot of, you know, things like running to get, to get to school in time, but, you know, suddenly your feet are running in treacle and you can hear the school bell and you I haven't had it for years. Well. I just haven't had an anxiety dream for years and years and years. As, yeah, don't know. I <laughs> don't care. No, well, no, you just genuinely don't care about anything. This is the problem. <laughs> you, you've just got to a point now where nothing bothers you, really. It's like you're just too lazy and disinterested in anything. This show, your career, my career, Carl. <laughs> no, I never, I never give up on Carl. So, um, Carl, so this little Harry the Boneless, what was your point? Was that, was that really your point? You wondered if you could live without bones? <laughs> yeah, I saw, saw the little fella on, on this programme. The he, presenter? He, yeah. And he was, he was a small fella and he was talking about Harry the Boneless. And I thought, you know, that's that's interesting little bit of science stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's about it on him, really. <laughs> All right. Well, that's just another bonus cheeky freak of the week. Is and it's it? not. That's not even the freak of the week either. No. 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 That's still to come. So you've had a pregnant. You've had a pregnant Siamese twin. I know, it's been mad. Mad. You've in had freak a bonus week. fella and a, a, a another fella talking about him. They're they're not even involved in freak of the week. No. This is getting mad. Play a record. Let's play a record. Let's have cheeky freak of the week afterwards, shall we? Yeah. Current oh. single from Nick Cave. <laughs> Can we do monkey news first? Oh, I'd rather have a cheeky freak of the week. Mm. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, He Wants You. Brilliant. Like yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're we not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done quite a bit of that in the last 20 minutes. We've right? so we'll on Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't like to keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Because... We're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right. So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve. No, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, they, they, by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. Or me at least mentally handicapped. Now, there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, <laughs> there was the, the mentally handicapped. <laughs> the mentally handicapped. Isn't that what oh, it was? I don't know where to start. But I, I I'd mean, like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff. Uh, <laughs> the term <laughs> mentally handicapped. Um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have stumbled What's over. the actual term then? <laughs> Is it retarded? <laughs> right. right, come on now. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news, earlier than usual. <laughs> I'll have to save this link now, monkey news. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff, <laughs> right, on monkeys. Um, and most of it has been- Is uh, bollocks! No, has been, has been like, happy stories. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's not- a, it's just gonna be like our tune, our monkey tune. That's Simon Bates, and uh, welcome to our monkey tune. No, but do, do you know what I mean? We've we've done we've done stuff about a monkey that robbed a bank. Yeah. Why uh, is that happy? He had a great life after that. Right. What in Marbella? Yeah. Right. We did uh, the one who who uh, saved someone's handbag in a railway station. <laughs> We've had, we've had a lovely marriage, couple of marriages. Couple of marriages. <laughs> couple of monkey marriages. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it was the one who got a job in a railway station. Yeah, the hairdresser. The one who set up a business in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I remember, don't that, remember one. that one. Either. But, I mean, uh, I'm willing to believe that that happened. Go on then, Carl. Um, but anyway, yeah, so today's isn't, isn't that, uh, isn't that happy, really. It's about, uh, some monkey, I think it was a chimp. Um, <laughs> He's an ape. Go on. He tried to 
it, it, I mean, the story sets off a, a sort of a, a weird thing. Yeah. It's something about he, he went to Russia to do some business. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Carl? I, I don't, it it I mean, jumped past that bit, though. It didn't start there. What? You, do you know what I mean? It, <laughs> it, it didn't tell you what he was doing. It just said, "There's this monkey. He went to Russia um, <laughs> to do some business, I don't know. do some stuff, I don't know. Bit of monkey business." And um, <laughs> anyway, didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> they were furious. We wanted a surgeon. You send us a monkey. Um. Anyway, ended up being homeless. Oh, no, it's joking. always taking a turn for the worst. What couldn't even get into a like, you know like a tree hostel or anything like that. That's 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 the problem. And, oh uh, God. Ended up uh, yeah, ended up homeless. Got in with some uh, some tramps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, so he's knocking about with some tramps and stuff, um, you know, sharing drink and what have you around a little fire. Um, <laughs> they broke into some home, not sort of squatted. Right, so not homeless anyone? Um, problem was, yeah, he had a, a you know, you know, roof over his, uh, little area head. Yeah. And he goes, uh, oh, this is good, this is, you know, we're having a good time, this is sorting me out. Yeah. He had, he had his he said that in Russian, though. <laughs> but what, is it, what, what was he eating? I don't know. Don't know. I didn't say. But they're in this house. Well, like, well, he could only be eating sort of like you know fruit, nuts, vegetables. That I mean, they they classically just sort of don't eat you know pork pies and. But they've got drink McDonald's coffee. in Moscow now, so sure he probably turned sure. down on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, there was a bust. Um, what? Well, there was a there was a bust in the flat that they were squatting in. All the other tramps sort of knew what was going on, legged it, left uh, little chimps out there, got arrested. And they thought it was a real fella at first. <coughs> they were like, get him, you know, he's obviously just a scruffy bloke who hasn't had a shave and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hasn't shaved his back for a <laughs> yeah. while. Or his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His head. Got, yeah. Got him down the station and uh, the boss was like, what's going on here? We've got a monkey here. He was like, what? So you arrested the monkey. Well, so the uh, arresting officers hadn't noticed all the way to the station that he kept slipping out of the handcuffs mm. and was going, <coughs> For the entire journey, they didn't notice till they got there. What did they put a hood over his head, maybe, and just like bat, you know? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you the uh, give you the story if you want. Uh, there's the headline. What is it? What's the headline, Steve? I don't want to see it. But the headline. This is once again from supposedly reputable news organisation Ananova. Homeless monkey arrested in Russia. Uh. <laughs> did sorry? Did you read on, or did you see the headline and make up that whole story? It's most most of it is there. What most what isn't it. there? What what bit isn't there then? Uh, no, I think I think you know uh, Steve can have a look over it, check it out and stuff. Point but out it, the embellishment was... for me, Steve. Will you? Well, well, what it doesn't say is uh, <laughs> that the police didn't realise it was a monkey. That's what I was guessing. That's what I was guessing. Really, that they got it back and said, "What are you doing? We've got a monkey." And they go, "Yeah, yeah." Oh God. There's some more uh, monkey problems in the week. Have you seen the Alfred's advert with monkeys in? No. There's a new advert out for Alfred's selling bikes and stuff. Yeah. Got some monkeys in it. It's yeah. caused an uproar. Why? People are saying it's uh, you know dressing up in tracksuits and that is uh, taking the Mickey out of Manchester. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not nice for the animals and that. So there's been loads of complaints. Well, they get a about free it. bike or something, do they? I imagine. I think they kept the tracksuits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Shit, I record that's, that's after thing, this though. cheeky freak of the week. No, I'm just I'm just saying we're not doing this to sort of again take the Mickey out of the animals and stuff. These are true stories and that. But yeah, coming next, freak of the week. Kings of Leon, Red Morning Light on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, uh, Steve Merchant, and little Carl Pilkington. It's getting exciting because it's uh, this special time of the week where we get to <laughs> talk about. A cheeky freak of the week. Well, just get Robusters out of the way, right? Because I've got to, I've got to put these prizes in the post bag now because I'm shooting off. Yeah, because you've got to go early. So I don't know how you do your job. You, you went to Manchester. You went to uh, Madeira. You had a day off because your trousers were wet and you had a cold. And now you're shooting down to Cornwall. You're leaving early. 
How do you get your work done? You've got one job. Me and Steve have got loads of things to do. Because I'm on fast, let me work. Like I said, the prize is ready and packed up. Here. <laughs> no one's being affected by me shooting off early. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, rock buster dancers, got to get them out of the way a bit earlier. Right? So, there they are. First one. Uh, he's got American coins all the way down his spine. Yeah. Why would that be? Right? <laughs> Initial was N. Nickelback. Nickelback. I got all these. One. I got all these this week. Right. Uh, second one. Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. What, what's going on there? Stiff little fingers. SLF. Stiff little fingers. Yeah. And the third one. Foxy Shipman. And uh, no. And a country and western singer. You said. Mm. Now, what's the initial? S D. Yeah. So spin doctors. Yeah. yeah. I got that. But and then I said to you, why is it a country and western singer? And you said Doctor Hook. Why is it Dr. Hook? Why does that give the, anyone the clue, Dr. Hook? A country and western singer? It's just what, what, what was in my mind when I <laughs> what, <laughs> Well, there we well, are. There you go. So, it, we'll change this to Rockbusters or What Am I Thinking? You could have had Dre. What's in my mind? You could have had And The Medics. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah. Just think it through. Who's the winner? The winner very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, Other dear. people saying, um, it what? really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Richie. Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. It looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So. When he, uh. When he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next week, no. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. About five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another hip-hop track yeah. full of, uh, yeah. full of Effin and Jeff. Well, again, no, I, no I, won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home, because obviously that makes <laughs> oh, it easier. Oh, dear. you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually going to be here next week, or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. <sighs> and in the, in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall, to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two days past work. the monkey world. That still work. Yeah. <laughs> that still work. What? Thought what you're going to interview some of the monkeys. Get I some love stories. that. I love that. You, you were going. Could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going. Carl, shut the. F please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? Right. Right. So, are we having uh, cheeky freak of the week? Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got show off? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. <laughs> Have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Know, Chris Tarrant going, I can't show off right now. I I, really, I, I, didn't, I couldn't get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get a, why don't you get a later train? There isn't, there isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Oh. Of course there's a later train. Oh, I've, I've, I've booked it now anyway. Right, well that's the it. point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not following right, Whatever, through. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. Uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> 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 and, I, and we've had two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. Oh, oh. it's not Dale Winton and Mel McAndrew, <laughs> It's is it? not your parents, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something rather than 1940. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not stra important. strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> And the woman which, who we married. Which he used as a condom. The yeah. woman who we married. Yeah. Uh, airiest woman ever. <laughs> right. Um, and that was their act. They used to, uh, tour the world, and they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. <laughs> uh, let's get them out on stage, here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd What do you mean out. he had a skin of a lizard, first of all? That's what, that's what he said, he, he had some sort of, uh, some illness. 
So he was called Lizard Man, and you liked that because it was good description. Yeah? I thought that was good. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Hello, uh, did, did we booked a table for two? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. You know who he is, right? Yeah. I'm what meeting can't... the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um... Now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week, and their act was having a bath. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I hope it's an improvement so, on that. Liz, what did Lizard Matt? He came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't, I don't really know. I think it just simply stood there on that. Yeah, what do you- when you read this, and you, it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, Lizard Man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, well, I can that's, extrapolate from yeah, that. Well, straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got the wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said, that they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Exactly, after, exactly. after, after it would be like an ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like... That's what I was thinking. What did you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like, I just was thinking, oh, parents' evening. <laughs> you, you, know I mean? you wouldn't want them coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so, well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And, uh, and, uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking round, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing... At school, when like you find out your your mates, mum and dad are really old. <laughs> right, have you sure. ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you you know, your grand and granddad bought you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah mum and dad. Yeah. And you go, oh. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> What's that we're talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> if you had a, if you had, you know, if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents, yeah. and, and it and was- they're like always say, fighting. They're always fighting, and, and, you know, like you say, if you're in a school play or something, you, you wouldn't tell them, would you? You wouldn't no. want them coming out with a video he camera. He didn't tell his parents oh. he was in the- when we were, Well, exactly. You, you did Little Donkey, you didn't tell your dad, did you? And he yeah. came along and videoed it. Yeah. Was kept that- Kept quiet, kept it quiet, don't want him to know anything. But you did- what was it you was meant to be playing? You had a little drum, didn't you? Yeah, I was doing, uh, I had a little drum. I think it was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, he started doing Little Donkey and I thought, I can add a touch to this. Sure, you improvised. <laughs> started playing along. It was like the first it. remix, yeah. wasn't it? It went, went down well. But yeah, that's, that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week, it's to get people thinking, right? Thinking how lucky they are. <laughs> that, you know, they, they don't have to... Comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean, Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just... What about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man, on a stick. Pop in, give us a call. <laughs> I'd like, you know, that's, that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping, let's... You know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. <laughs> Nip into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, buy a comb. Park right up. up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh! Carl, oh, when's your train? In a minute, I'm gonna get going now. I'll see you later. Thanks, Carl. Right. Brilliant. What are you playing? Are you going to play a song? Kirsty McCall. Yeah. I'll see you later. Cheers. Kirsty McCall, New England. Carl Pilkerton has left the building. He's rushed away. He's on his way down to Cornwall. And, he, and we're left by ourselves. Indeed. In the room. See, if we can do this... If we can press all the buttons and not make any mistakes, strictly speaking, there's no need for Carl. I don't mind if we make mistakes. Well, no, exactly. We never were in the, in the old days. No, sure, sure. Um... I think Carl is going to love Cornwall. Because hmm. I think, one, the mayor is probably an animal. <laughs> yes. And I imagine the townsfolk think like Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine he'll probably he'll stay there. He'll be made king. Have you ever seen Return of the Jedi? <laughs> yeah. In Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, the little <laughs> furry creatures, they see C-3PO. <laughs> and because he can talk and, he's, and he can speak that language, they actually elevate him. Oh, he's got like status. What are you doing here? Hooray! He's back. I mean, what are you doing? Are you gonna stay till the end? What are you doing? Right. What are you doing? Right. Right, well there he is, he's on his way. 
Yeah, if, you, if you're listening online in Cornwall, I mean, I, I can't imagine that's ever going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, on, the, on a clothesline with a, with a bean tin <laughs> exactly. at one end and yeah. a big bean tin in London, or if I'm, I'm cool in London. Yeah, or if the foil uh, <laughs> helmet you wear to fend off laser rays from alien terror space are somehow picking up the show, <laughs> then uh, Carl's on his way. Look forward to meeting the bolt Because he's got a sort of like, you know, the uh, uh, obligatory sort of red face that would mm. go well down there now. Because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. he's been out in the sun or he was... Uh, you know, uh, pre-boiled when he came in, but he's, he's rushing down to Cornwall now, going from Paddington Station. So, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you want, if you hang in, if you're in the Paddington Station area, you want to pop down there and sort of wave him off, then do. Yeah, don't be afraid. That's not a that's not a dirty sexual act. <laughs> wave him off. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> <laughs> wave him off. And um, call in the week as well. Um, Carl dot Pilgerton XFM dot Co dot UK. Mm -hmm. Send him anything. Just clog up his email. Yeah, I mean, because he gets stressed at work. So if you can send him three or four emails each yeah over the next week so he's got to read them all but disguise them don't make him look rubbish so he's at least he's got to sort of open them and look at them or you know some of them might be correspondence so he will it's um you know just phone his uh, line as well just ask for and ask uh, carl and leave long messages yes. on his voicemail yeah so if if you can uh just just for us just for me and steve remember it is mine and steve's show carl is merely like you know the icing on the cake yes if carl can come back maybe next Friday or Saturday or, 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 or Monday, whenever he comes back, to about 250 emails and 200 voicemail messages. If you, if you put down, when it says, uh, what's the name of the message, the title of the message, if you put monkey news or monkey information, they'll have to open it then because he'll be intrigued, even yeah. if it's not about monkeys. Yeah. Do that anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, voicemail messages, leave them long, like there's information, disguise it, that, so it might be important. Yeah. Uh, just so he has to listen through it. I wish I'd give his own mobile out, but, uh, you know, that, that is just too cruel, but anyone can get him at XFM, and of course we've given out his email before, so, I mean, go mental. There are plenty of ways to torture Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I mean, we've, we, we're doing all we can on a Saturday. <laughs> but we're only two people. But we're only two men. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, um, so listen, um, go, go berserk, we'll, uh, we'll be back next Saturday, and we'll leave with, a uh, song for, song for the lovers, song, song for, for the ladies, ladies, whatever, it's a beautiful track. A song for the sunshine. Song for the Sunshine, it's Lily White by Cat Stevens. And we've done it. We've, we don't need Carl. Definitely not. See you next week, Rick. Bye. Well, where's the darkness? They believe in a thing called love. Carl, do you? This is XFM 104.9. That is my favourite band at the moment. You love them? I, I absolutely love them. I think they're funny. I think they're straight down the line with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm. Oh, brilliant. Did you see them on Jules Holland last night? I didn't, night? sadly, no. Brilliant. Were they good? Yeah, absolutely jumped. Oh, I mean, Jules didn't know what to do. <laughs> was he was he playing some boogie woogie? He, they wouldn't let him play boogie woogie over the song. Think. That's what I mean. That's why he stayed back. But I uh, can't imagine it was very good. Then. He shook the. I'm surprised was, you say they were good. It, it was Jules Holland no, I mean, I, I thought. I, I, I thought. Hold on, this is missing something. Yeah. This this is missing someone from Squeeze vamping over them. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah. they did they did well without him. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Well, here we are. Then. We're back. XFM on a four point nine. Carl had to leave early last week, but, um, you can you stay to the end this week, mate, or... Yeah. Yeah? You don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already, <laughs> and it's no. only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back! Well, he's gone straight back! <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. It's just, uh, it's only, mate. It's just absolute, that was, that was oh, the last holiday the he case. had, last holiday Steve had, he, f he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a king mm. for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can live, you can almost rule the place. <laughs> if it weren't for Castro, I'd have been in charge, kind of cash <laughs> I was flashing around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do, do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before just, that. So he thought to the prostitute, you said no. Mm. You were going. <laughs> yeah, well, it was two dollars. I mean, I'm not made of money. <laughs> Did you have a good holiday, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's all right. Went down to Cornwall. Now, you're going to the most of people down there, Steve. Well, <laughs> don't look at me. I'm not from Cornwall. Well, you're from that sort of area. Well, not really, but never Genetic mind. Genetically, oh. means. Right. They're weird. Mm. Well, you must have slotted right in. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they weird? What do they look like? Just all, uh, sort of odd people. Uh, a lot of old people, but not just old, sort of messed up old. What do you mean, messed up old? It's just got, you can't just say that. There's just, there's... There was a woman with a funny neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're more way with funny. Why does she have a funny neck? If you were writing an essay, you wouldn't say there was this woman with a funny neck. How would you describe it? She, uh, sort of had her head, like, pointed down all the time. Like, don't do it, it's his radio. No, but just for you, I don't know what. Yeah. About, uh, yeah. 
Okay, right. <laughs> so, brilliant. I don't you... know. I was saying to Suzanne, what, what happened, you know, what do you think? Because Suzanne knows everything. That's the yeah. good thing about her being with you. You just ask her, what happened to her? And Suzanne goes, Carl, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been here before. But Suzanne, you... your girlfriend, or mummy, as you call her. <laughs> 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 oh, sparks are flying. Yeah. I got a little bit of chocolate. Can you just lick a tissue and wipe it off? Oh. Well, she said it might have been like, because back in the olden days, they carried stuff on the... The olden <laughs> days? What do you mean, the olden days? <laughs> this woman was probably, what, 50? Uh, no, she looked about 70. Yeah. But like I do on Cheeky Freak of the Week, right, I always turn it round and we get, like, something good out something of it. Something positive, yeah. yeah. I said, I said to Suzanne, I bet she finds a lot of money. <laughs> yeah! Always staring at the ground, yeah. <laughs> oh, so dear. Always, oh. So, um, you Maybe back... she just had, uh, new shoes and she was admiring them. Yeah. Do you think of that? Before you point the finger and judge? Mm. Or, or a necklace was too heavy. <laughs> exactly. So, you're back ref refreshed. So, uh, what have we got for this week? Have we sort of... Because we didn't meet last night, which is, uh, we usually meet no, sort I, of five... I called you and said it'd be good if we could, uh, you know, I wasn't getting back into London Well, I was up for it, I was up for it. Past yeah. Seven, but... Yeah. Yeah, but we all need to be there, it's not yeah. because me and you being there. Yeah, so... Yeah. yeah. No, you're right, I mean, you're absolutely right that I wasn't there yet, because I wasn't willing to, uh, just be uh, governed by your particular schedule. You want to jet back in from another of your holidays right, wasn't at a holiday. 8 o'clock. It wasn't a holiday, though. Well, so what, so you what do you mean? Whoa, 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 what do you mean it wasn't a holiday? What was it? Uh, it was, well, it was a treat, wasn't it, from my mum and dad. So it wasn't a holiday. I what, so you didn't enjoy the five days off? You'd rather have been here moaning eight hours a day, seven hours a day. You see, we said last week that you're always whinging. Here you are whinging now. I'm and you're saying it's not even a holiday. You're saying it's not even a holiday. What right. was it then? Would like a nurse who took sick children to Florida, would they say having a great holiday? Sorry, what, what, what particular ailment did your parents have for the week that they had to, they had to fly in mm. uh, Carl Pilkington, MD? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, all right, it was holiday. Well yeah. then, good. Now some honesty, now some truth. So you came in, you came back from your holiday, you wanted to start back to work straight away, Steve couldn't be bothered to meet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So we've got nothing prepared for this. Well, you can rely on rockbusters. <laughs> right, that's good. We've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, monkey news. Even though you were away, you were still working. Still doing stuff. Did you go to the monkey sanctuary? I'll tell you about that. Tell right. us about it. Play a record. Right. What do you want? That's Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, classic. Yeah. And then Cherub Rock. Yeah. Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock. That, of course, Rick, is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. well indeed. Indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of... And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a, chimp, a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said, it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So, well, what do you think of that, Carl? That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She remembered exactly who's there and everything, sitting yeah. in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, that at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I mean, just listen. Listen, I, I listen got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> it. Yeah. I'll be I'm happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'll be reading that. Later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, and little monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure. That's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go, 
uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me, look. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right? And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was just, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what they it had was. what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, abort. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far have uh, you got before you bother to read the leaf there? Uh, uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. No, we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Right, okay. I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I, I spent out years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My, my mum and dad had been there before. And yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like a, a war bit in it. A war bit, right. Yeah, like, because they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to whether all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was like a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> 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 My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. No, no, I cool. like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want to ride one? No, but they, they we're were- We're not, we're not a ride. They were <laughs> massive and he just like, look at that, look at this face and that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, really? No, okay. but he does it, because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh god. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. Er, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little, uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck, it was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was gonna be really expensive. Sure, so she's got one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, come on, we go in. It's rubbish, this. <laughs> uh, what, well, the fat family wouldn't <laughs> let him play with them? So, uh, he just said on the way home, he said, I can safely say, that I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Probably. Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Go, oh god, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll tell bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By his bedside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with him. Well, they, said, they told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid, or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I no, think they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the sun <laughs> of the day? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, oh that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, because... That is great. That gives me an idea. Coldplay, God put a smile upon your face on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they uh, were talking about the fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Disguised ideas. Disguised as something else. Exactly. And, uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan Horse Theory, I never understood how it had come about. Do you know what I mean? So, I, 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 Carl has got a frown on him, like, a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, Carl, not Tony Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Well, the Trojan horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story. Um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, yeah, olden, olden times, olden times, times you know, specifically. The yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Waiting. Basically, things have got out of hand. Uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated. It got out of hand, and the, uh, you know, the Greeks, Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Greeks laid siege to Troy, for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates. They were saying, "Let us in." They weren't. They were. Blah, blah, blah. So all they did was they all disappeared. They all. They, well, all they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, that's exactly. why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was they left as a gift for the Tro Trojans. They left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like forty foot high, fifty foot. Long. I mean, a big, you know, big wooden an horse. arc of a and horse. And the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And lo and behold, who was hiding inside? But an entire Greek army. They Lord. left out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. All right. And that's where that famous idea of a Trojan horse has come from. You know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. So if you ever, yeah, he doesn't really understand, does he? No, but to be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. It, I, I, it, because I don't understand who comes up with the idea. I mean, but I, I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be other ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go? When they said, one, one, one before they said, oh, I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on, go General, on, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then, then, ah, I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right. Who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, why don't we get a giant bra and twing everyone over the <laughs> yeah, walls? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler, and you know like at school you used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant <laughs> ruler. That's your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of our suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together? Yeah, and you all hold it down, and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over, and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what- the other thing is, right, these people open the- for some reason open the door. Well, I don't understand. Firstly, there's suddenly- the- the army that's laid siege them for six years has disappeared, in yeah. their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now, but the, what they've done is they've built us yeah, a Yeah, they've a built horse. us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something, yeah. you know. Um, something for you, you know, sorry about the laying siege and everything, forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift, is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're, we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. But it's, well, I wheel mean, it, wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're gonna give them a gift, well what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche, <laughs> yeah. be inside that, we could have an enormous soap on a rope as a It's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time. But it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, brilliant, I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse, well what are we gonna do with it? <laughs> what yeah, are we gonna we'll wheel it in anyway, leave it. Just wheel it in anyway. Wheel it in, let's go to sleep, let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. it, that's, uh, yeah. But it's this idea of going, someone going, right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go, yeah, and they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes, well it's gonna take a while. Yeah, we've got to get wood. We've got to get other it. Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we gonna get out there? Doesn't it look like a horse? It is. This is the worst horse I've ever seen. Why, it's like a cow. Wow, well, yeah, the other's where we hide. <laughs> There's a horse that's got no tail. It's, yeah, well, that's the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere along the line, the truth of it has disappeared, and we are... Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah. Because, uh... In Eohippus in Greek means a giant tank. <laughs> right, so that yeah. actually was a Sherman. Yeah. And it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah. But yeah. of course, down the years, they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam, Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera. Right? Just, right, get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl, we should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah. What do you want to learn about next week? We've told you about the Trojan horse. Uh. Know anything about any freaks? Oh, that was big for me. Can't stop growing old.
placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan right. horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase "Beware Greeks bearing gifts" comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You ever what, heard of that one? Go on. What? What's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that used worldwide or what? Will they say that in Greece as well, or? Uh. <laughs> Can you imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean beware of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like, maybe it's too good to be true, or you know. It's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably what came from was that one. from South End, Molly, and he just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic, mm, yeah, ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? <laughs> Cheeky, in it, eh? What? Never mind. <laughs> what? I think that probably proves it. <laughs> I thought of another one like as well. I was saying, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard, I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, it might as well go the whole hog, depending on the, the outcome. But because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So if you're gonna get caught, don't keep steal a lamb, you know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung, but killing a sheep. Oh, your dad would be in trouble, down in oh. Wales, stealing stuff from that, uh, oh. from that oh. phone box. Well, he has a couple of sayings, right? Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um, <laughs> Why would you? Ask oh, Suzanne. One <laughs> is, uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising to, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's it's a totally made up thing. It's like your granny sucks eggs, isn't she? Because she's she's older than you, and it's probably a lost art or something. All right. Uh, and the other one, um, don't sucks eggs. Sucks yeah. eggs. Yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. Uh, yeah. don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? What? So sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge. Your, sorry. sorry well, that's lower. I can't. Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your you. granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there, because that might just be you, you, when you were little, you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what, what context is that said in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that, and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh, can't remember, I can't, I, I, I don't are know. Are you sure these are specific to your granny? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, why are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> suck an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. Oh, oh, oh god. <laughs> That's made, That's yeah, made, made it, worse. it worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst I- uh, <laughs> That Give is my- a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> We've no idea, I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know, maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, email in, tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Rockbusters, Carl. Go yeah. on, should we get the ball rolling? Let me just find the, uh, yeah, the gifts yeah, here, the yeah. little treats. We've got the album from The Coral, you know what I think about that. We've got, uh, Comfort in Sound Feeder. Well, it's just a novelty record, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so. we've got, uh, on DVD, more great comedy moments, favourite clips from the best of contemporary BBC comedy. We've got Partridge on the front there, we've got, uh, one of the guys from Red Dwarf, and, uh, Brilliant. No, no, <laughs> good stuff on there. Smash Hits, The Reunion, more great 80s tunes, Catch a Goo Goo's on there, uh, plus some stuff- Too Shy? The <laughs> it is too yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, let me see if you can guess which one's Go on. Tiffany. Uh, well, yeah, I know it, the only one. I uh, think we're alone, though. Yeah, I think we're alone, yeah. Um, Mel and Kim? Uh, Respectable? Mm hmm. Human League? That'd be, oh wow, what would, it be? would they have got, don't you want me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Ta Lies take on me? Yep, yeah. well done. Um, Madness? Baggy trousers. Of course. <laughs> uh, Kim Wilde? Kids in America? Yeah, so there's just all those treats. If you if, yeah. you, if you like a song from an 80s band, it's probably on there. Yeah, okay. Plus we've also got on uh, VHS, uh, Graham Norton, some kind of best of compilation from his TV show. So, uh, there are the, um, 
Oh, well, is it, is it the one where he talks to sort of female gay icons and, and looks at the internet? Because <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, right, there you go, let's do Rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gvaysatxfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. Uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, we're wrong. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by boat, I'd get your fags on there, because it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> 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 Imagine Bob Holness. <laughs> sorry, we're out of time. I, uh, it's sorry, your minute's up. You've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> sorry, right. so what the well, let's do it again. I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change uh, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. Go to France, buy yourself a yeah. bag okay. of paper. Okay, okay, fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the, uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what, no, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well don't, you know, because go on the ferry, get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. <laughs> Alright, so that one again, uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat, get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B.F. B.F. Right. B.F. Okay. Okay. Right, the second one. Um, mm. this little, uh, <laughs> foreign cafe's growing its own steak. <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. yeah. This little foreign cafe's growing its own steak. Go on. D. Alright. Right. Okay. And the last one, uh, uh <laughs> Is uh, that part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh, this on the uh, on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what what's it start with? It's uh, C D that one. <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Better than Ellie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, summer, yeah, summer favourite. Sweet. Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Thanks Carl, tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet then. Alright, do you know I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that? Mm. And, uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Because right, he got up to loads of stuff and every time I see him, he tells me something and I think, well, it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, uh... <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of Well, this, this character, happened, character. Right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line. Yeah. And he was saying, oh, trains aren't what they used to be. Sure. Um... He said, you know, he said I was looking- They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying how you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said, that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to, like, getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, Right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right. And one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right. And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fellow who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right, he said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, oh, right. Quick <laughs> getaway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so the fella goes in, in the pub, and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on, he, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, oh, what's he doing in the pub, he should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear, or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling 
is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So, he doesn't realise this though, because he's, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal Of course, yeah. So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, Wouldn't so he, yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, put he's the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now, yeah. right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> right? Uh, loads the of damage. pulling the signals don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loads of, loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it, if it was today's money, yeah. it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It, it shut the station off god. for four weeks. Um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job, the f one who was in the, in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his, uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. <laughs> so. I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, this sort of stuff my dad goes on about. I'd never put it on telly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Blair? Out of time on XFM 104.9. We ought to give those Rockbusters clues again. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, We've had very one. few contributions so far, Carl. I think you've really started. Uh, this might be it. I've told you, you're on thin ice. If this if this goes wrong, if it's rubbish, and if everyone doesn't get them all, that's the end of Rockbusters. Right. Well, uh, the first one again, right? Yeah. If you're out of France, right, by <laughs> boat, you might as well get your fags whilst you're on that, because you'll save a few quid. Right? <laughs> yeah, different every time. B, <laughs> B F B F is the initials of the artist that that little cryptic clue makes up. The second one. Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. Right? That's D. <laughs> Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. D. <laughs> and the last one, uh, <laughs> if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic when it went down, he'd, he'd probably scream this. <laughs> C. D. Right? So email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, right? they're not flooding in, but yeah. Well, I'll see how we do. Carl, have we still got monkey news? We got monkey news coming up. Now you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah, that's so impressive. I found some of that. We've got. How, how do you how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents. You've just been away with your parents. That's a couple of weeks, ten days. So that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that. You went to Manchester. You were you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've, you know, I, mean, I suppose because you, you've only got one job and, you know, I've got a lot more, this is just one of my jobs. But, I mean, don't you ever count your blessings, go, God, thank God, I just, I can have time off, I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard, you know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, no. Yeah, it's just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So <laughs> I've, I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though, when I was in Cornwall, right, I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Uh, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Oh, yeah, you're you're out I know, yeah, well, you know. M me dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I'd sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad point. and Susanna playing crib. Why did you fall it's fallen out with him? Because you do live in the 1940s. Yeah, why did you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. You've got to make your cards add up to 15 and all Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to 15. Brilliant. I mean, I mean, you almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's, uh, really good at maths, and like, he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like 15 and 2, 15 4, 15 6, 3, 3 for your at, 1 and all that, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And he adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right, so I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, no, what do you mean, hang on? I said, oh, what, what have you got? I said, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all artsy with me. Sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! That he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like, his, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Well, anyway, right, so it doesn't matter. I think I'll go off and do some prep, right? Yes. Do some research for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Found one of Suzanne's magazines, right? Uh, flicking through, because there's always interesting stuff in there. There was something about, uh, about swingers. 
Right. And I was like, what's all that about? Yeah. And it had an interview with some people talking about, you know, how they, uh, sleep about a bit. Yeah. And I thought, if my wife looked like that, I probably would. Because <laughs> uh, there was a few pictures of them and they were all pretty ugly. Yes. I thought, right. So I took that in, soaked that up, thought, there you go. Uh, carried on reading. There was a bit in there about how women still have crushes, right? Yes. Uh, and the woman was going on about, uh, how she's 38, right? But she still fancies Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh huh. And, uh, you know, even though it'll never happen, she's still got that little bit in her head yeah. that thinks one day she'll leave Gwyneth, right? And end up with, with, with her, right? Right. Anyway, so I'm flicking, I'm thinking this is a bit boring, but I'm flicking through it all. And, uh. Is this says, a, is this a Rockbusters clue? No, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I read, I read further on, read th further on, right? And, uh, she said, you know, we, we, I like to go out with my mates, and we come up with lists in pubs of people who like, oh, you know, they, they'd be nice to go out with. She also came up with a, a list of unlikely lust objects, I think she called them. Yeah. Guess who was in that list? Ricky Gervais. Think again. Carl Pilkington. Right. Next one. Johnny Vegas. Said, lanky co-writer. Rubbish. Lanky co-writer. What do you mean lanky co-writer? Well, don't need to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he said... <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Let's not talk about... I, I don't want you laughing at my expense. I'm an unlikely list <laughs> object. Yeah, the, but... But you, you... Yeah, what was it called? The, the list? Uh, the... The unlikely lost object. Yes. Yeah. You were in there. Right? Who else was? Well, you weren't in there. Richard, hey, Richard Maidley. Fine. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. Alistair Campbell. Brilliant. Yeah. Another handsome dude. Hmm. What are you talking about? How can you, how are you, what, you, you think I'm ashamed or embarrassed about that? I'm proud of it. What magazine was it? <laughs> I need to buy a couple of copies. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> need to get a t-shirt made. It, 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 yeah, and did she leave her number? Yeah. <laughs> what, so what magazine was it? Just out of, oh, just out of interest. Just, I think it's know. called Red. Yeah, sure. Know, yeah. But now you've dissed those people that have put themselves in their swingers because you've said they're ugly. So now we know what magazine it is. People are going to look at that. People are going to look at that poor woman, and they're going to know you think she's a hog. No, but I, I think they even know. Was there a picture of the woman who know? drawn up the list of unlikely lust objects? Mm -hmm. What was she like? I wouldn't waste my time. Uh, <laughs> thanks, mate. I know you're on my side. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, object of unlikely last object, Steve Merchant. I'd like to have that now, prefixing my name everywhere I'm written about. I know, yeah. Did he make the freak list? Woo! Which is, in a, which is a different magazine, isn't it? And I'm joking, of course, Carl Pilkington, a man of sort of quiet, quiet dignity and, <laughs> and in a way, he's got his own sort of inner beauty, hasn't he, Carl? Not really. Don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it is, because the woman that wrote the piece, saying that I was an unlikely lust object, has just emailed in. And Carl, you've offended her quite considerably. What did he say? Why? I wouldn't waste my time, is what you said. She's re repeated oh, that. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time, the flaming cheek. Although it's a horrible picture, I am, of course, in real life, a vision of loveliness. I'm not 38, I'm 25. I don't think Stephen's that unlikely lust object. A sense of humour is important, and he's welcome to my phone number if he wants it. <laughs> a sense of humour is important, that's a down Is she a swinger? Uh, stop it! Don't have a go at the woman! I'm, I'm, mess I'm messing about, she knows I'm messing about. Well, how are you messing about? I've told you this, though. I've told you that anyone could be listening, haven't I? I've told you that before, things you say. And, and you, but we encourage him. We say, what does she look like? We, but it's meant to be rhetorical. That was a joke. That was Stephen's joke, what does she look like? I.e., him joking, like, oh. I'll call her up because I'm on a list, and then you have to say that. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. The chances are, if you know, if she likes Stephen, she hasn't seen him. She listens to the radio. So mm. the likelihood is that you know she was listening to this show. Yeah. So think. Will I drop the thing I was going to do about Lisa Riley? <laughs> well, <don't, laughs> she's don't, not listening. Some she's, people deserve it. She's still at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what, from Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> There's an all-you-can-eat all place going out of business as we yeah. speak. Oh, bloody hell, she's <laughs> back, you killed me, I got a little bambino, please leave now! 
Please leave! <laughs> so, uh... No, but she knows we're only messing. This, yeah, uh, this everyone thing. knows you're only messing. We're all only messing. I hope we don't offend anyone of, uh, you know, any kind out there. We're only joking, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. Say something nice about her. What can you remember of the picture that you could that you could say was good? Maybe she was wearing some nice things. Anything to be honest, I'll have another look and have a look. I think she had a nice shirt, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carry On. I love it. It's great. It is fantastic. Yeah. On XFM one hundred four point nine. What do you make, Carl, of these people? I was reading a paper today. They've been queuing up for 12 hours last night for the new Harry Potter book. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, God like it that. really annoys me. Everything, uh, uh, oh, God, it really annoys me. But who has to, I mean, I know it's just a kind of willful sort of stubbornness. I see, I, I, I see adults yeah. reading it, you know. I, I, oh. Well, I was up in Hampstead last night, and uh, there's a, a Waterstones branch of that, and there were a couple of people outside queuing. Waiting for it to open. Um, what they look like? Well, I mean, things that are like the ones that come out of a forbidden, pl forbidden planet on a Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what do you yeah. expect? There was one guy. I mean, I don't mean to disrespect him, but he was a big bloater, shorts, <laughs> wearing shorts. I don't want to see his big fleshy legs. He looked like John O'Coleman, if I'm not. Well, there's nothing wrong with John O'Coleman. He wore a knapsack. Yeah. They always seem to have knapsacks for some reason. Well, they got old. They got old papers in there, haven't they? <laughs> exactly. Got a Probably. nine years supply of well, mirror. Like four of them. There was a couple of women, a couple of guys. All looked basically the same. They were interchangeable, and um. Get they were there for a moment. Yeah, I am the fat bloke with fleshy legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recognise your description. I like to read these books whilst listening to XFM <laughs> of a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was sort of watching them from where I was, and I and they were there, must have been there for about an hour and a half. They were obviously strangers. They'd all they, their common interest was Harry Potter. They were reading. They were sort of chatting to each other for about an hour and a half. So as I'm leaving, I wander past them. An hour and a half in to them having met each other, the conversation is, uh, all I heard was, uh, huh. well, of course, apparently she cried when she finished the last one. And I uh, thought, they what, they, they got, they've not moved on, the conversation had not moved on. No, they might have been talking about Dawn French, you know, uh, chocolate orange, <laughs> yeah, by then. Yeah. I know she <laughs> cried when she finished the last one yeah. once. Yeah. But, but um, um, I yeah. got no time for them. I, no, am I. Pop into Walrus now. Yeah, I'll I tell you what, get it tomorrow, read it. You're, not, you're gonna get home at half one and start reading it. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So you can put it on the internet. Oh, God. Your opinions. Oh, it annoys me. It is extraordinary. Uh, the whole kind of, the whole kind of Harry Potter phenomenon has passed me by. I, I know, I know. Well, people, good, good luck to her, you know. But you meet adults who are, um, you say, what are you doing? They say, I'm just rereading Harry Potter. What, you couldn't follow it the first I know. time? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not her fault, you know, she no, made three hundred million pounds by writing a few books for I'm her sure kids. Very well good, well yeah. done. But, um, I'm sure they're, I mean, I'm not sure they're very good, but, uh, I'm, I haven't read them, I'm, I'm sure they're not. But no, I don't know. Well, I've, don't I've, I've no, 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 I'm joking. No, I've, so I've, I've no idea. a book about a little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> With glasses. Yeah, and make millions. <laughs> you you so easy. If you think it's so easy, you do it. You, you like him, because you look a bit like him. Well. Well. You know. I wonder if he's on a... Uh, that wish list, that that woman who emailed in, why was she making a list of unlikely... Can we leave this now? No, but I mean, what was it, what was context with it? It was like, here's my top ten weird looking fellas that I no. do. What was it? <laughs> no, no, but what, what was the, what was, she was talking about what? What was, she'd started talking about, what, body waxing and went, and by the way, while I'm here, here's ten blokes that I would if I had to, and they're a bit weird, you'll be surprised. What was the context? I forgot. <laughs> He's scared to say anything now! He's scared to say anything! Oh, bless him. I just was looking at a picture because I was attracted to it because she was good looking and that didn't read on. <laughs> that alright? <laughs> well done. That's uh, got you out of that little mess. Yeah, yeah. Well but, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Can't be honest with it. Have you read them? Uh, no, because the, the first time it came out, uh, I was a bit confused, wasn't I? Because I thought it was about Of course you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, of course what? What? This is a what? It's a book. No, I, I, I got confused with the little, uh, the little rabbit. I thought it was her, didn't I? You talked about it when Beatrix it Beatrix Potter. Yeah, I got, I got mixed up with that, so I sort of missed out on the first one anyway. <laughs> you were just running around confused. <laughs> so it was like, like <laughs> yeah. too, it was sort of too late to get into it, I think, after. Yeah, it's too late now, yeah. Um. It's impossible. Yeah. Same well, with Shakespeare. Pretty... If you weren't around, you know, the day the <laughs> yeah, day he wrote the first ones, there's no point in going back. But it's all the fuss that she's getting as well. Like, um, well, I think it's because she's a British industry now, isn't she? 
I mean, it must have made, what, billions? Well, it's the perfect success story. She writes a, a story for her children and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon. You know, it's not cynical, it's just, it's just a great story. Did your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, there's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, which she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid that I'm sure if they came out they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, there was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but the one that was really good was about a, uh, a kid who gets, uh, a dog, right? Um, but it's quite an old dog. This is gonna be an episode of The Walt one, yeah. isn't it? And right. then go on, go on. And, uh, he's playing with the dog and that, but it starts getting a bit old, about 15 or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, oh, it's rubbish, this dog. <laughs> <laughs> So, I would love that one for kids. <laughs> I would love that one. Tommy went, oh, mummy, my dad's, oh, no, kill it then. <laughs> kill it then. Shall I? Like, yeah, just throw it in the lake. I'll get you another one. <laughs> Do you want a Nintendo? Yeah. Kick the rabbit to death then. <laughs> or no <laughs> food for you. Oh, brilliant. No, 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 Jump, Van Halen, on XFM 104.9. Right, come on and Carl, we've got a lot to fit in now. We've insulted <laughs> a lot of people. Only about 25 minutes to go. We've got monkey news, we've got rockbusters. Have we got a cheeky figure of the week this week? Could crumb it in, there yeah, we do. Do we want to, do we want to hear the end of Carl's story? Yeah, what's really the, the, the kid, little, little Timmy and his, his, his 15 year old dog luck, he got a bit bored with it. Right, so he said, oh mum, you know, this dog's rubbish and that, I'm sick of it. Yeah. So she goes... How old were you when your mum was telling you this story? <laughs> uh, I don't know, about four. Okay. It wasn't last week on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, right. So, uh, so she goes, oh, all right then, we'll get you another one. Yeah. She goes, brilliant. What did you do with the old one? Just kept it, but didn't sort of play with it or anything. <laughs> 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 Just ostracised it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's over pretty well. Or curled up and died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So, um... Uh, what did so you get him? What sort of dog? I think it was a little, uh, little baby. Right, Labrador. Puppy. Mm -hmm. Not puppy, yeah. Yeah, Labrador, right. good one, good choice, good choice for a second dog. So, um... Yeah. So I'm anyway. loving this story. <laughs> so I'm actually story. loving this story. So... Where does he live? I, th I don't know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter, it was near a, near a lake, old... <laughs> well, that's where they're getting rid of all the... Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. We're, we're getting, that'll make sense in a minute, right? So, mm. uh, so, he's got that little dog, he's playing around with it, he's mm. playing with its belly and stuff, he's thinking this is brilliant, best dog I've ever had, right? And the other dog's sat in the corner looking all fed up, yeah. right? <laughs> So, uh... I like this story. So he says, he says to his mum, right, I'm taking, uh, little puppy down the park. Yeah. And she goes, well, take the old one with you. And he goes, oh, do we have to? It's the moral, it? I bet the old one saves him. So, that. so, he goes, oh, do we have to? She goes, yeah, it still needs a walk and that. It's crapping all over the house. Right. Yeah. So, he takes it down the park, right, and, uh, he's playing around and he's playing near the, near the lake. Right. Is the puppy near the lake, Carl? Because this is what's worrying me. Yeah. Puppy's near the lake, yeah. right? That jumps in. Yeah. The kid goes, oh god, he jumps in. Remembers he can't swim. Yeah, idiot. Right? This kid is based on you, isn't it? Almost certainly. Flapping about. Water's going everywhere. He's going, I can't, oh god. And he, he, like, he wants the puppy to help him, but the puppy's just like drowning as well. Yeah. yeah. The old dog comes up, drags them both out. He goes, I can't believe it. You know, I said I was fed up with you. Yeah. You saved me life. Yeah. He gets home. And he says to his mum, kill the little one. The puppy. Kill the puppy. Yeah. So it's good little. Good what little does he story. say when he gets home? He said, I don't need the puppy now. I've got Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so the moral of that story is well, just follow your whims. They just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you get bored, get bored and yeah. get another puppy. Get another dog. If you get bored with the old one again, just do it again. I mean, yeah. just eventually, you know, get something yeah, that you like for dogs, a little. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. That is a brilliant story, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's that. Rockbusters. Yes. I don't want you to have monkey news right now. Oh, we've okay. just had a little story there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it, yeah. Don't want to go too far. Mm. Yeah, go on. So we'll get Rockbusters out of the way. Have we got a winner? Uh, yeah, well, come on in. Mm, See, it really. worries me that we've had uh, very few entries. I think that even your mental fans aren't getting these, which is really worrying. They must be terrible clues this week. All right, well, uh... Has anyone got on right, Steve? I think there's just one guy, yeah, who I suspect has won in the past. Well, there that's we so what? 
Right, the first one. Uh, if you go out of France by boat, uh, you might as well buy your fa fags when you're on that, because you'll get them a lot cheaper. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Um, BF. Yeah. Buy it ferry. Right? That's like- What? <laughs> buy on ferry. What? Buy on- buy What's on buy on ferry? ferry? Who's- what, what's that? Is that a band? What? What is it? I don't no, know what Bri it is. Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry? What's that got to do with buying on a ferry, though? Just- because he's quite close to it. Buy on- <laughs> Buy on ferry. Buy what? Buy on- Buy on ferry. Sorry, uh, uh, t t what- That's what's first your first one. language? Uh, the second one. That's rubbish, that doesn't count. No, Brian, buy on ferry. <laughs> Brian Ferry, buy on ferry. Um, <laughs> there's this little foreign cafe, um, yeah. it's growing its own steak. Um, that's, that's Delamitri. Uh, the third one. What? What? <laughs> Sorry, what? What? What is that? What is that? Delamitri. Delhi is a yeah. little foreign cafe. Yeah. A meat tree and that. <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> what were the initials for that? Just- just D for that. Just D for that? Yeah. So not D-A? So you didn't even give them a chance to get the group? Well, they, they got it. Well, no, 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 they, they, they didn't. Right, it's the end. <laughs> go on, right. Go on. Delhi meat tree? Delhi meat tree. <laughs> One word. D. <laughs> D. Delhi. Or any letter. They're growing M, their own M. meat. M's in it. Well. Go on. Okay, so Bayern, Bayern, I love Bayern Ferry. <laughs> and Ox, Ox, Oxen Music, Oxen Music was brilliant. <laughs> can I just- I love Oxen Music. Go on. Can I just point out, Rick, that, um, we've Dave, had- David Bowie? Daily Meat Tree. Yeah. I don't see why, necessarily, uh, Aiden, who, uh, emailed in, why he doesn't get to win, because he emailed in Dire Steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be just as valid, as far as I can tell, but <laughs> yeah. Delhi Mitri it is. Um, and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic- I'm looking forward to this. this. It, with a little bit of fear. Jamaican fella, if he was on the Titanic, he probably would have screamed this. Yeah. Uh, that's Christ de Berg. <laughs> Stunning. So who's who's the winner? I'm not going to give it to anyone. I just what's don't. That, I so don't. what what's the Jamaican bit got to do with it? It's the D. It's Christ de Berg. <laughs> say it again. No, I think they, they've worked it out now. What's what do I say again? Christ de Berg. And who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? Who's Christ de Berg? Christ de Berg. Who's the winner, Steve? I'm, do you know what? I'm going to give it to Ames so, because he just he just treated you with nothing but contempt. Steve Martin uh, uh, emailed in again. He got the first two, and then the last one he just emailed. I neither know nor care about this answer. I'm tempted to give him. He's you, one do you know what you've done there, don't you? Go on. You've put the nail in the coffin of uh, Rockbusters. I warned you. I warned you for three weeks, and you sort of bucked your ideas up for a little while. But Christ, did those Berg, are the worst you've ever done. Uh, the worst. Um, uh, Delimitri. So uh, and. Didn't it just put D, and then buy and buy and ferry, buy and buy and ferry, buy uh, uh, buy and ferry. So, is that it? Then aren't we doing it? Play anymore? record. Aren't we doing it? Anymore? I'm ashamed. You're an idiot. Are we doing it anymore? I'm just going to keep saying you're an idiot. Play a record. Are we doing it Have you learned nothing from Doctor Fox? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not oh, a yeah, Sony out the window. Huh? Aren't we doing it anymore? Well, you need to start working on it now, because they're so good, you need to start working now for next Saturday. Aren't we doing it anymore? Just, uh, I don't know. Aren't we doing it? Cardigans. You're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> right. Now, whilst I was in Cornwall, I wasn't online. Right? I didn't no. have the internet, so it was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. And I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. So, I said to my dad, do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys? Brilliant. This is a- no, this is what Trevor McDonald does. Turned out- He caught, caught the ten, he goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, dad? <laughs> this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this. 
Three. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two, two of his mates. Imagine oh, sorry, one yeah, one I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounds a bit far-fetched living in Manchester-like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> 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 so doing what, answering back? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Tried it on with his wife. I <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> bit the head for trying it on with his wife. I love it. I love it. It's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh, I'd call him up, but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh, I mean, it'd be good. It'd be good to get him on. And just, let's interview him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear. And I'd love to hear his story. Do a lot of work. Like. Yeah. Well. Well. It, 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 well, we're not scared of work, are we? No, obviously. I mean, I'll, I'll you know. get myself if you can't be bothered. Yeah, oh, you know, I'll so. have a word, I'll have a word, I'll sort it out. Yeah, try yeah, and sort that yeah, out. Yeah, sort that out, yeah. Well, don't yeah. tell us the rest of the story, then. Let's let him say in his own No, words. but there's another one as well. Uh, some When fella... you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? <laughs> 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 I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. <laughs> but there's him, and there's some other fella he knows who had a funny name, I'll have to find out, because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And, uh, I think he said he went, my dad went round one day, I don't know why. Right. Went around there, knocked on the door, chimp answered. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps Mad, running mate. round. Mad. Anyway, uh <laughs> Chimp answered <laughs> Is that it? Is that the end of the story? There's a chimp answer in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't the drag artist before he shaved? No, I'm sure, no, it wasn't your grand. Because oh. I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. Anyway, go on. Um, then. This is the monkey news. So you got that for free. What's this going to be like? Well, Steve? let's have more jingles. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, another phrase we've been talking about phrases today. Yeah, we have. Don't yeah. teach your granny when she's shaving. Yeah. Uh, don't teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Uh, don't look horse in the mouth. Yeah. Don't let the chin pass the door if you're tucking your cock in. <laughs> um, familiar with the phrase monkey business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard that one before, Carl. That's brilliant. Right, well, it came about, this has been emailed in and I haven't really had a chance to look at it, so I'm just weighing it up now. Um, <laughs> God, yeah, this yeah, is a big yeah, shambles yeah. on air, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm ashamed of it. it. I mean, what was Dr. Fox? Dr. Mm -hmm. Fox must have been really polite. He must have been thinking, I don't know how to put this. Mm. He, what, he, uh, he must have wanted to scream and go, you shouldn't be in the radio authority. My parents listen online, I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I've weighed it up. <laughs> um, long time ago, right? Yeah, in the, uh, olden days, yeah. In Go the on. Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little family of monkeys in there. Mm-hmm. Right? Having a good life. Cool. Right? Didn't have any predators in there. Right? <laughs> so, they were loving it. Yeah. They had a load of food around them, they had loads of banana trees. Yeah. Right? Mm, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they did. Sorry. Just, yeah. Everything's going great, so, they're happy in that. They go out of bed. <laughs> okay. Wake up in the morning, load of bananas gone. Ooh, hang on, interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Amazon Either your dad's been around, or is it, this isn't the great Amazon banana robbery, is it? So anyway, turns out it was another load of monkeys from another part of the island, from the rough bit. From the rough bit. From the rough bit. I love it. They went into a middle class area. Oh, oh, the ones with the earrings and the leather jackets. Oh, that is brilliant. From a rough part of the island. <laughs> so, the monkeys thought, well, there's no point getting into a fight with them because they're harder than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and they carry chains. So... <laughs> I know this conjecture! They got flip knives and this tattoos. Yeah. Go on. So, basically, they said, let's do some business with the bananas. Let's do some business <laughs> with the bananas. This is shit! This is <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Right, come on, we've got much time left. Oh God! What do you mean this? Forget it. No, forget it. Come on, Carl, do you want to say something? 
switch the record off. Switch the record off. Switch the record off, Carl. What are you talking about? What did they do? Oh. Let's do business with the bananas. Yeah. So, they said, well, rather than them coming robbing them, we'll, we'll flog them. <laughs> so, that got a stop to it then. The people, the monkeys came. They didn't have money. He said, give us some, mon you know, give us some bananas. Um, and it says, uh, So what, they exchanged bananas for bananas? For, for, for berries and nuts. <laughs> so that's where the phrase monkey business... No! No, it's ...comes not. from. A little business no. to set up. Right, there, oh God. That's the end of that as well. So that's the end. That is a shame. That's the end of Rockbusters and Monkey News. Well done. You've done it in one show. <laughs> well, there's the best band in Britain, in my opinion. Big words. The Darkness, growing on me, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilgrim. Have you got the album? And already, they've had an argument. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether we need to cheapen the show by discussing it, but I right. asked for a particular track. Uh, Carl is the producer, and he failed to get it for me. He's failed to get it for me. He's failed to bring it up from the record library. Completely failed in his mission. He needed to get two records, and he failed to get one of them. A 50% error rate there. Yeah, but like I said, I looked in the system, he told me what album it's on, I brought that album up. I'm busy. But, okay, so fine. Fine, you're absolutely fine then. That's no problem. You know? It, once again, it, that's, a, that's a great excuse, Carl. Brilliant. The show has been ruined, it's been partially ruined, but you've got a bit of an excuse. Alright. I didn't make a big deal out of it when mm. you said, oh, and whilst you're down there, get us a new 50 cent single. I never, I never said, while well, you're down there, get the new 50 cent single. I asked you if 50 cent single was lying around. If, yeah. it, if it hadn't been here, I wouldn't have worried. So I get it, yeah. I did that for you. Right. And then I come up, you say, has it got swearing in it? Well, what? I don't know. It's five to one. You're the producer! I've been you're the around. producer! It's the brand new single! I never thought it'd been lying around in the XFM office anyway! But I don't, I don't have time to sit around and listen to music. Sure. Well, yeah. Right? I know that you have. Now you've got an iPod that can hold 7,500 songs. I don't know when you're going to get around to loading all them on, but I haven't got the time. Sure. Busy, busy. Yeah. Fine, right. okay. No, no, that's, that's a perfect excuse, Carl. Well done, mate. Right. I just hope that I never have to depend on you in a real emergency. Mm -hmm. I had a bit of uh, bad luck as well. I wanted to play, um, R.E.M. and, and uh, maybe the, uh, Listener can help me here. Can you uh, email in Ricky Gervais at xfm .co uk if you knew what know what song I'm thinking of? It's an REM song. I think it's on the album of the last one we've done before. And he says Mulholland Drive and I'm Steve McQueen. That's all I know. I'm sorry, I can't think of the title, so we can't. I need the title to look it up. If you know what I mean, I can't put in like that. I can't put in Mulholland Drive. The system because what are you talking about? So I need the actual title of the song to look it up to find it. Down in the library. Oh, well, I'd go down yourself if you're going to go down to the library and get that. <laughs> I wouldn't send Carl, because ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Well, if he wanted to, he did have time, because he came in at 20 past 12 rather than 5 to 1. Yeah, so no, I is. told you about that record that I wanted it yesterday, mm. didn't I? So yeah, you've had 24 yeah. hours notice. Yeah. So that's not really an excuse, is it? But I did find one of my favourite songs of all time, which is Bones off the Ben's album and his radio head on XFM 104.9. And there it is, because you gave me lots of time yeah. to find it. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Could have brought it in himself. No swearing in it. Yeah. <laughs> Bones. Radiohead. The Bends on XFM 104.9. And thanks to Paul, who's Actually, emailed in. There's a whole bunch of other people. Oh, there's lots of people. Got Davey, well, Steve, Ashley. It's listen. Electrolyte. You know, it all comes flooding back now. We've got that. I've got it out of the library. We're going to play that. That's done. I've, it's interactive. I've used the listener. I've shown the listener, right? I've helped them to help themselves. Sure. I've said, if you want to hear it, tell me what it is. They told me what it is. They're going to hear it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Perfect. Sam's going down the library and, well, we don't, we don't Yeah, well, we know mistakes can happen if that, you know, if you have to go down the library. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I, I checked it though to make sure it was the right one, you see. It's yeah. just, just a little bit of... Well, it's a good rule that generally if you pick something up a CD, you, know, you want yeah. to play on a radio Sorted show, a library, you, check, you, normally check, you normally check it at the back. Oh, right, yeah, that's right, yeah, if you want a job done, do it yourself. You're absolutely right, Carl. Yeah, so... Here but we anyway, are, look, we're all, let's all make friends, let's kiss yeah. and make up. Yeah, touch and make up. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's just, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm up on Carl at the moment because it was my birthday in the week and not only has he bought me a little vibrating thing to put on the chair, cause right. I'm not about that, so yeah. that vibrates, that. Yeah. Actually, we can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do it between records now. 
Right, and what's that doing to you as you as you? It's just this all that sends a little pulse into your sort of muscles relaxer, doesn't it? I've got a real relax on there. If I'm relaxed, the listeners relax. We're all happy. Sure. He's also got me this little <laughs> electronic bongos, and I thought we could do like <laughs> oh chimpanzee that monkey news. So it's like a jungle sort <laughs> of thing. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's supposed to be one of the great so, jingles, but even has. So I've got, I've got the vibrating. <laughs> Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> so, Dr. Fox, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. I think you'll know that's a clear improvement uh, yeah. in this show. So, thank you for those. It's alright. Yeah. Yeah. What did you, uh, what did you get him? What did I get him? <laughs> I, I couldn't get him anything, I was too busy buying myself an iPod. <laughs> you're joking. Well, it's a little bit gay, isn't it, giving gifts to blokes? Yeah, it is, but for someone <laughs> who's like major. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Play a record! Someone who's major? <laughs> what do you mean, someone who's major? Well, because he's a major celebrity? <laughs> no, made you. Oh, made you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what, that's what yeah. Yeah. Crazy beat. Blur, all right, on XFM 104.9. Brilliant. Yeah, so, uh, I also got, uh, Jane got me a few nice presents, including, my favourite of all of them, a real bow and arrow. <laughs> a real bow and arrow? Yeah. Right. And, what, you, you, you know, you're gonna, uh, rob from the, uh, rich, I am give to the poor? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta make the little outfit. You and your merry men. Uh, I've, she's got me, like, two yards of green felt. Sure, yeah, And, yeah. Uh, I've just gotta find and a tree house. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who can make me a lovely little natty outfit. Yeah. Why is she what you're wearing? Hey, you live in central London, so where are you going to be using We've got this? a garden, I did it yesterday. I've right. got my finger though, because I'm going to protect so it's just, oh, it goes so fast, isn't it? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that sentence. <laughs> I, I'm only here in the studio, I saw you point to your finger, so I, I'm guessing from that yeah. that maybe you injured your finger. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. For the listener, again, what, what exactly yeah. were you uh, talking about then? No, because when you pull it back, it. <laughs> okay. So. And do you have a target? What do you yeah, think is a target? I got a big, the, um, Big cardboard box flat on it, down a tree. Right. You go, oh, it's brilliant. Sure. I'm getting a bit excited thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, no, indeed. Because when I make that outfit, I'm going to be running round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh. And do you have, um, do you have a picture, uh, like a face maybe on your target, like Osama bin Laden? Something yeah. like that? Yeah. Sure. No, it yeah. just says, this way up, fragile. Right, okay. I forget what came in it. But, you know, it's good, good fun, isn't it, Carl? Bow and arrow, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah? Would you like a little bow and arrow? Yeah, it's alright. Yeah. Well, I'm forced to have a rifle as a kid. Did you? Yeah. A real one? Yeah, just shooting cans and stuff. Yeah. It's alright. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a wonderful anecdote. <laughs> well, we went, I went out with Drink with Carl in the week, and, uh, we went to uh, a restaurant, didn't we, Carl? Good night. And we sat there, and next to me, when Carl came, next to me was, uh, um, what's his name? Ross Kemp. And, uh, he was sitting there, and I saw Carl, and I, I tapped him on the shoulder, I was telling him, and I pointed to Carl and him, and I said, it's nice to see you two back together again. Nice. And Carl was horrified. But Carl didn't know that I'd already spoken to him before Carl arrived, yeah, so yeah, was, yeah, I thought yeah. it was okay, I thought I could break the ice, because I'd met him before. Sure. So he just thought I was insulting him. And in the week we were talking about his head, his little head, weren't we, Carl? And Carl suddenly stopped the conversation and said, if I had hair, what would we be talking about now? <laughs> I think he'd had enough of everyone talking about it. He looked good though, he had his, his special little do, he had it sort of, you know, cropped a little bit more. I like it when he's just freshly had it done. Mm. Do you like- yeah. has, has that ever happened to you, Steve, when you- if you're somewhere, say if you sat somewhere, does someone sort of, you know, is he anyone else who you look like, or <laughs> would you say you're a bit of a one-off? <laughs> I love these two. But, I, I, <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> it's a lot. Right. But to, not be, well, to be fair, uh, he seems to be having a go at me an awful lot more than I do at him. Now, I mean, he just starts it. You know, he I just starts it out of I, nowhere. I th yeah, I think I think his is sort of a get back for the way you treat him as a producer, not you know. But he's not a producer. <laughs> If he produced the show, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a reason to criticise, uh, but... I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, seriously, I mean, it really winds me though, because, you know, it started as a joke, but now it's just, it's abuse. Yeah. He got annoyed at heat, because it said, Carl produced her, well, not so much a producer, as just a bald mank, and he yeah. went, can they say that? Yeah. Can they say that? See, that's a magazine, an independent publication, it's identified what exactly it is you do. Yeah. 
Oh, here we go then. Come on, bring it on, because here we go. He's looking at me. I know he's thinking. I no, can hear the I'm cogs. Not, I'm not, not thinking anything. It's <laughs> true. No, no, that, that is true. Never <laughs> true word. Play a record. <laughs> now then, I listened to, I heard this on the VH1 in the week, and I have not been able to get out of my head, and I, I really kind of want to, oh, I want to get it in everyone else's mind now so they understand the, uh, the pain I've been going through. Miss yeah. you by the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that's now in, embedded in your brain and you can ruin a week by having to sing that constantly, irritating people in shops and everywhere you go, Miss You by the Rolling Stones. Good track. Good track. Carl, uh, Jonathan, um, Ross came out of this, uh, last week and, uh, we were talking about stuff and Carl was mesmerised when Jonathan told a story that he was bored once in a hotel room and <laughs> shaved his ass. He shaved his ass. Yeah. Sure. And Carl, you didn't stop questioning him, did you, for about... I, ju I just wondered, at what point do you sort of say, <laughs> oh, this is getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's way too long, tucking it in his socks or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it's not, I mean, it is boring in hotel rooms, because I told you before about when I was in Edinburgh, and I had nothing to do, there was nothing on the telly, and you sort of, you've, you've eaten the shortbread biscuits, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. so that's when I read the, the phone book to see how many... That's maps. when you read the phone book? Well, to see how many Macs were in Scotland, Mac <laughs> sure. Macintosh, yeah. and it was like, you know, 42 pages. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan, I don't know if he'd already done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, he said he, uh, he, he shaved his ass. Uh, now, when, when we say he shaved his ass, it's a- Not his cheeks, is Oh, all of it? Yeah, all of it. Did he, did he say hard. that? Well, I think- But I other than the cheeks, but then, there's then not much left. But it? then we got to the fact that me and Jonathan, if we pulled our wealth, we could have shaved Carl's ass for a thousand pounds. Right. And he said, yeah, for a thousand pounds you can shave my ass. S can I- Suzanne said, can I say this bit? Your but girlfriend said what, Carl? She was annoyed. She says, well, I'm not allowed to go there. Why is anyone else? And of course, the whole table stopped and leant in and said, what? <laughs> I mean, it's like me touching him there. I went, what do you mean? <laughs> this is too much information. It was too much information. I like the fact that you've had this conversation with her. I like the idea that she touched your ass once and you went, Woo, hands off. Yeah. I love you, but keep your hands away from the ass. Do you know, do you know why he said it, it, he's talking about the, the, the most intimate part of the ass, the middle ass he's talking about, that she, and he said, I said, why? He went, it's a bit gay, innit? I said, how can a girl touching it be a bit gay? If you stood behind you, it could be anyone, right? <laughs> Oh God! And it seems, I mean, you can imagine the conversations we were having, right? And um, it just, it's that thing that the waitress heard something every time mm. she came over. She heard the word, <laughs> like, yeah. cock or Jonathan Ross saying, I shaved my arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh dear. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? So, it's a thousand pounds now, isn't it? Um, but presumably you give Suzanne off anyway, so everyone will be happy. You've used the arse to best effect. She's got, She's got half out of it, so she's she's made as much out of your ass as you have, in a sense. We're, me and Jonathan are happy. Yeah, but to be fair, it's his ass on the line. <laughs> so I know, but I mean, you know, it's just not like she's getting a bum deal. Well, she's no. getting five hundred, you know, <laughs> yeah, quid. No, I you understand know. that. But um, do you reckon? Just thinking some more. <laughs> play a record. Can I just ask before you play a record? Um, <laughs> if we were to shave your ass, let's say we did it for charity or something, got sponsorship. Um, do, how would we do it? Would we use one of those big kind of old fashioned razors? No, no, I'd use a big safety. I, I, I just straight away. And would away. you use a gel or a foam? No, 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 I just, I, I first of all, yeah, I, I, I think I just, um, lather it up. Right so you lather up his ass for it. I do, I do, I do the outside bits, just go straight down, big broad strokes, clean, right? Then I'd have to go in the crevices, and I'd, I'd, I'd need an assistant, I'd pop it apart, and just very gently go in there. I might even use electronic equipment, just so there was, there was no sort of like nicks. Okay. Well, so, how do so an electric razor? Or, I might wax the internal middle ass. <laughs> Okay. How did Jonathan do it? Because he did it on his own, didn't he? I see his mirrors. Why do we, we call, I'll ask him, we'll call him later. But, uh, I don't know. Well, I perhaps don't... you, perhaps you listening have once <laughs> shaved your ass, maybe during, uh, but, uh, an exam or something. Well, what, what I bored. think, what I think, and this is conjecture, but I think he was probably there, he'd had a shower, he shaved his face, right, and thought, oh, he was naked, looks down, he goes, oh, what a hairy ass. Well, I've got the razor in this hand, I've got the mirror there, you know, I'm not, I'm not on stage for a good ten minutes. 
Yeah. There's one thing I don't like going on stage with is a hairy ass. Bang, drink, wallop, <laughs> done. On stage, thanks, see you later. See you next week. Yeah? What are you thinking, Carl? No, it's just if that- how airy was it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> how airy was it? <laughs> because I imagine- I mean, you're saying mirrors and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But is he- I mean, how old is he now? He's- Forty-two. <laughs> and they say your- your, um, your testicles drop quite a bit once you start getting old, don't Yeah. They? So that- he's got to make sure they're out of the way. Yeah, but I don't think- if, I mean, I can speak for myself, uh, 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 you know, as, as a similar age to Jonathan, that, I mean, you know, if there's millimetres in it, it's not like we tuck them in our socks in the morning. Okay. They're still in the same place. You really wouldn't know the difference. It wouldn't- if we filmed it in, you know, time-lapse camera, they wouldn't- it wouldn't be like a bungee jump. Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't be moving a lot. Yeah. All right. Do you think he's a? I told him he's a he's a good looking fella, Steve. Would you would you agree with that? Oh, I know? told Jonathan that he said that he and he he just went for it as well. Yeah. So you 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 spent a lot of time picturing Jonathan's arse. naked ass. You, you, you find you'd, let him, you'd let him give you money for for arse touchery. Yeah. Whereas your girlfriend's got no chance. No and that. you're saying he's a good looking man. Do I play a record and think about what you've done? Interesting. All the energetic people they all sparkle as they're walking down the street. Fifty Cent, Twenty One Questions, new single from him. Well, my, me and Carl got a joint favourite lyric now. I love you like a fat kid loves cake. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, but, I mean, I like it because it's funny and humorous and cheeky. You like it because it, it's it means something, don't you? It actually, you think that that's the absolute truth. If someone was to say that to you, that, that would be the most romantic thing they could say in it because it's. No, no, I'm just thinking that's you know what it means. It's like the Elephant Man. Right, the Elephant Man, that's what he's called. Again, you know what you're gonna get. The fat kid loves cake. You've said it all, you don't have to say any more. I can't believe it. He, uh, I'll tell you what made his day the other day. I love it. Jonathan Ross said The Elephant Man is one of the best films ever made. Yeah. Uh, Endorsed by a celebrity. I know. Well, by a film buff, really. It is good though, isn't it? It is a very good film, yeah. We well, yeah. have got Cheeky Freak of the Week. Come oh, up. right. It's got a lot, lot, lot of stuff going on this week. In the freak world? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, there's loads. I mean, stuff that we can- the one that hasn't made it. God, this is what this- so this is what hasn't made it, so we'll judge it on that, go on. There's a woman. Right, do you know how, um, I mean, in a way I thought Elephant Man, it was a bit tight because, you know, we sort of took him on a freak show, did a bit of a, a road show with him and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's some woman, I think she's in India, like, like now, who, um, huh. makes a lot of money, because she's got three legs, <laughs> and like, seven toes, stuff, and she was saying, uh, People pay quite a lot of money. Not I Swiddy mean, Patel. <laughs> it's, it's not that much money, like, compared to here, but over there, yeah. it's like, loads of money. Sure. Um, and all you do is, uh, you go around to her house, and you pay this lot of money, and people just go, oh, look at that, look at that. Extra leg. For leg. Right. It's quite a lot of money, isn't that? So she hasn't even got to go out on the road anymore, like in the old days. No, that's, what, that's what annoyed me, it's yeah. like, well, you could get to them faster. <laughs> You go and see them if they pay the money. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh. But yeah, there's- What she could do is go in and buy a pair of shoes, right, and then nick one on the way out, because they only put one out, don't they? Good mm -hmm. idea. So she could get, you know, two, mm -hmm. three for the price of two. Just offer. one of the many perks of having three legs. Just one of the many three legs. The other yeah. one is, I mean, keepy uppy. But she'd be good at that, she wouldn't she? She just stays at home and puts the feet up. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's not even Cheeky Freak of the Week. That's, that's coming up later. Coming up later. Oh, brilliant. Now, Rockbusters, dead in the water, isn't it? We've killed that off, have we officially? We killed off- oh, we killed off Monkey News and Rockbusters. Uh, Didn't I tell you that there was some sort of petition for Monkey News? Was there? What was it's the story? a lot of- oh, it's loads of- loads of emails you, and that. You so mean you've done Monkey News? You mean you want to do Monkey News? No, but the, the, uh, seriously, there's uproar. And people were like, you can't get rid of monkey news. Yeah. Don't be doing that. Uh, who, 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 who was- Loads and loads of people. Was, was, it, was it monkeys? Trying to write the complete race of Shakespeare? Did Tony Blair get a whiff of it and he's- He's coming so down we're like doing monkey news. And Rockbusters, Steve, if you've got a better competition then we'll do yours, that's fine. I, I, do you know what I mean? If that's what you want to do, we'll do- what, what, what did you want to do? No, I was just wondering whether we should perhaps not do a quiz at all rather than do that piece of rubbish. Might be better to have nothing. Might be better just to have silence during that part of the show than have Rockbusters. 
How I don't know. If we could discuss it. If I give you the clues mm. and that, and if you think they sound rubbish, we're not doing it. <laughs> well, I know that. I guarantee they're going to sound rubbish. All right, let's make it the last rockbusters then. This is the last rockbusters. Well, it depends. This is it. okay. This is just if it's good, but you get a reprieve. It's all about this. Mm. Okay. Okay. Right. Go on then. Let's do rockbusters then. Oh, we're doing it now. Should we record and do it after that? Do it after. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the prizes and then we'll come back with the, uh, the clues. I, I, cause I've, I've dug up that R.E.M. track. Excellent. So it's an interactive show. Okay, we've got the best summer holiday album ever. What we've got on there is like Elvis vs. Junkie XL, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Holly Valance is on there. Yeah. Laz Ketchup, it's all the stuff that the XFM listener is yeah. craving. Got, Tribute to the Ramones it, album, we've got, uh, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers are on there, Metallica. Yeah. Uh, Street Legal from Bob Dylan, that's nice. Brilliant. Did you just buy that in the four for twenty pounds from HMV deal? Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> um, once That's again, a good album. The Talons of Weng Chiang, a Doctor Who classic. Yeah. And uh, there's something for uh, for the XFM listener. Uh, Eight Mile on DVD. I as thought well. that was nice. That film. That was that, the last bit was funny. It was because it's, it's a good film. And there's some good rap offs in that as well. Yeah. So uh, let's play a tune and then we'll come back with the Rockbusters clues. R E M. Go on. Give it to him. R.E.M. Electrolyte on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> um, I walk uh, down Oxford Street every day to go to the office, and it is like running the gauntlet in it's Gladiator. Really. It's not only is it just like you know you have to dodge people and they're dawdling or rushing or c you know keeping into the road to get past some people but avoiding taxes. But it's like hands everywhere, like leaflets. I don't know, there must be a million leaflets mm. given out. It's all- Mobile phones, teach sandwich it, shops. Uh, teach yourself English. Yep. Uh, teach other people English. And, I know, and and uh, those uh, charity people, it, um, some of the Alzheimer's, and, and I, I've been caught about six times where I couldn't say no. I've got about eight standing orders now because I just couldn't say no when they confront you. Yes. Which is, you know. I'm all, it's amazing how often I'm on the way to a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm always yeah. on my way to a meeting, and then I always feel guilty if I walk past them again two minutes later with a HMV bag. Yeah, yeah, st full. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> crowned with bargains. I know, yeah. No, but, it's, um, it's actually weird. It's, they're like zombies. It's like you're fighting them off. You need a flaming torch. Yeah. To pass them. Or if it's not them, it's tourists. Just constantly, you know, excuse me, can you take my photo outside HMV? Or outside Topshop? That doesn't happen to me. Oh, right? okay. Okay. always seem to have tourists. Just I in the I way, just I, kind of dawdling, you know, looking at the buildings. I walk so fast, I walk so hard, I put my head down and I just try and walk so fast everywhere mm. now, because it's just, yeah. But mm. Oxford Street is just, it's unbelievable now, and I've, I, I think it's AIDS that I've started noticing. Even if the window's open and I hear just like cars and they're on the mobile phone, it's the loudest place in the world. Yeah. I don't know what we can do. But isn't it one of the busiest streets in, is it either the world The or universe. It's, it is mental. I think if we carpeted it, that and put some curtains up. It was just dead and- it's like pubs with those- those polished floors and metal tables. And everyone's, um, having to talk like that to yeah. be heard. The jukebox is quite loud and I want to go, just- just turn everything down. Yeah. yeah. Let's put some carpet down, just talk quietly like relax. this. Yeah. Let's put the music down a little bit. We'll have a good time. I've never quite understood that impulse. I don't, again, if it's age, where you go in a club or- or a- or a pub, as you say, and the music's just slightly too loud. So it just makes everything slightly tricky. It's slightly tricky to have a I conversation. Know. But what- uh, what annoys me is, is when it's for the amusement of the barman or barmaid. Yeah. They're bored, they're in a pub, they've got the music up, their music up, yeah. right, t t techno blaring, right, they've got a telly on watching a soap opera, yeah. and I wanna go, choose one or the other! Yeah. I mean, what are you watching? I got a minicab last night. I imagine you don't travel in minicabs, but the guy driving, one of those guys, he's, he's, I know he's driving a cab on a Friday night. Okay, no one wants to be doing that. And he had, uh, one of those phone, you know, the little earpieces that you put yeah. in, so you, it looks like they're talking to themselves. And he's there, and he's, so he goes, where are you going? I went, oh, crouching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, and he was chatting on his mobile phone the whole time. It's, his voice was so loud. He had the radio on as well. Oh. And he wasn't concentrating on the road. I, I, and I, I was like, I just got, look, I'm paying you ten pounds here to take me somewhere. Please, just s stop chatting or arranging your social life for two minutes. Yeah. Get me to my destination safely, and then you can you can resume your conversation. My, my favourite one is uh, uh, I'm going to so and so terrace, please. Where's that? Mm. I want to go right. You're not you're not taking me then. Yeah. I mean I I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Exactly. I don't drive. That I'm paying you. That's why I'm out. paying you. That's got to be part of the service. But I mean uh, I know people have been in many cabs, didn't know where I was, and didn't have an A to Z. No, I went, I got I came. I was in East London once. I said to him, I'm going to. Uh, Going to North London, he went, uh, where specifically? I went, uh, Swiss Cottage, he went, sure, sure. I said, do you know the way? He went, yeah, 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 yeah. Set off. Along the way, he went, do you know the way? 
I said, well, oh, I thought you knew. He said, I said, have you not got any said He went, no. He was one of those guys who'd just taken his car out middle of the night. <laughs> that was all he had. Yeah. All he had, all his credentials were he had a car. No <laughs> map, no torch. The two other things I'd bring with me. And he said, uh, so we're driving along. He went, he went, uh, I could probably get you to Camden. I was like, okay. He went, to start. The, I mean, that yeah. is the start. Exactly. He went, do you know the way to Camden? I thought, pull over. It's not worth it. I'd rather hitchhike. I'd rather walk. Ludicrous. Those people who just go out. Yeah, they just <laughs> take a car out yeah. to earn a well, fiver. Well, a car. Oh. Have I've you ever done that? No, well, I, I, you know, I, I'm sick of living here. Mm. And you send out people hassling you. Do you, when I, you say here, you mean the world, don't you? No, just, just, just <laughs> in London is doing the adding now. Mm. Uh, the other, uh, the other week actually walking home from here, uh, and like you say, there's always someone hassling you saying, do you want to buy this? Do you want one of these? Uh, going down Carnaby Street, right? There's your first mistake. He said, uh, you into meditation? <laughs> so I was like, oh, I had a bit of time to kill, so I thought I'll have a chat. Right? Have you got to- oh, we've never got time, we're too busy. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were too busy before. Well, I said, yeah. what, what's all that then? What do, what's, what, what do you do? And he said, we teach you how to breathe. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm 30. I think <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah I've done all right. And he sort of said, I'll oh, forget it. He goes, <laughs> I'll forget it. <laughs> I'm 30. And in, in, in Selfridges, they do, um, uh, th like Evian or whatever, that water company there. And, and they've got like little glasses of water. <laughs> and you walk past and go, have you ever tried this? <laughs> <laughs> it's water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you go, we'll try it. You go, Jesus Christ, is that what water is? <laughs> what have I been drinking then? You've been drinking piss and mud. <laughs> have I? I'll have a bottle. <laughs> anyway, listen, Rockbusters. Oh, come on then. Let's get it done. Um. Really? Yeah. Come on then. Right, so cryptic clues and initial as you work it out, it's a band and stuff. Yeah. Right, Brilliant. first one. Bob Olness. Uh, the first clue, <laughs> um, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so we took him off and he threw him away. <laughs> right, that's the clue, the initials okay. TB. TB. Okay. Right, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and threw them away. Second one, the Scottish monster has got a, a, a bit of a tan. Right, the Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. Okay. That's, uh, that's TD, right? <laughs> and, uh, the last one, uh, well, the, uh, the 60s singer had a heart attack whilst he was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. <laughs> right, and that's F N M F N M. Well, the 60s singer's had a heart attack. He was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. Email in. Ricky Dots your base. Remember this is to save Rockbusters. If people don't get this, right, it's no more. So you better, if you want this to feature this day, you better get the clues. Right. Good work, Carl. Uh, we'll give those clues again after uh, the next tune. What are we playing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you love it, don't you? Love, it. love, love it. it. Good, it's a good, good stomping pop number one rock. XFM. Addiction just because I think things are, are rocking up. They are indeed <laughs> rocking yeah. up in the land this year, Steve. Yes, that's good news. I think Evanescence, them, the darkness, rock tastic. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton of a Saturday. Can I just say that the shaving your arse feature <laughs> yeah. from earlier? Uh, if you missed that, that was half past one. That was a discussion on shaving your ass. Yeah. Uh, it was great stuff. But that seems to have caught the public imagination. Yes. We've had so many emails. We've had someone telling us exactly how to shave your ass. Yeah. So if you need that information, I can probably forward it to you. Well, I think this will be the year of rock and ass. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's extraordinary how, you know, just a simple discussion like that that mm. you would think perhaps was crass, crude. And mind you, our, our listeners do like Carl talking about monkeys. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's, it, it's something to be proud of. Mm. It's not like we changed a nation or, or freed a, a people or oh, found no. a cure for something. We we hit them in their, you know, at their level sure. with monkeys and asses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what our listeners love. Yeah. <laughs> monkeys and asses. Yeah. We should put that on the poster. I and they go together, because I, um, I joined the zoo, uh, uh, last time we went down and became friends of the zoo, right? Oh, right, I thought mate, you had to sit in a, <laughs> <laughs> in a cage for a, <laughs> and, uh, it, th that thing happened. We, I, I went straight for the chimps. Of course. Right? And there was sort of like three sort of, uh, big sort of adult ones there, and um, there's people with their kids, and I could see the people just pulling their kids away as one of them went up and started putting his face up the other one's Oh, Sure. 
and it was sort of like, I just can't be worth to explain this to yeah. my children. Is yeah, that, exactly. So I always people just move my head, oh come on then, there's the lions, <laughs> go and have a look at the lions. Yeah. What are they doing? They're just sniffing each other's asses. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I remember when I used to go to the zoo, there, it always felt there were certain animals that weren't getting a look in really, that no one was particularly interested in. The tapir. Exactly. We were going straight to the snakes we were interested in. Yeah. Birds, so I don't remember being big, particularly interested in birds. Big cats, although it's a bit depressing. Uh, great apes, great apes, yeah. reptile. You're right, reptiles. Yeah, birds. Yeah. Uh, Unless it's a big one that you think can oh, rip a, vulture, a dog apart. Yeah, a vulture, you go brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, owls are brilliant. But, yeah, owls great. But but I've always wanted a little owl on my desk. I'd like be doing work and there'd be a little owl there and I go, can you get that pencil? And it just sort of goes over and gets me a pencil, goes cheers, and it just watches me and it thinks I'm brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not really. No. No. No, I've never had to have any kind of animal sat on my desk. No, Carl? You'd like a little owl, wouldn't you, that helped you? No, I had a, I had a little magpie, I don't know, we've thought about that. Oh, he came down and, uh, started pecking your grifter, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Maggie. Sure. Brilliant. Inspired. And it, you took it to school and it didn't come back didn't once, come back, it? didn't come mm. back, didn't see it again. Oh, dear. Did it ever peck, peck your head? Cause mm. you used to have hair, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. No, it did. It started getting a bit violent. Really? Yeah. Pro mate, was it becoming sort of of age where adolescents probably sexual frustration thought, you know, cause it, cause I think magpies go for shiny objects, don't they? And you were probably sort of, yeah. probably losing it a little bit then in the front, and so when the sun was out- There's a bit of a sheen on the front. <laughs> they saw a glare and thought, I love that. Yeah. What is that? That's brilliant. Yeah. Or as it was sort of pecking away, it mistook it for a tree. <laughs> yeah, cause of the noise. Cause of the made. noise. Yeah, the hollow oh, sound. I squeezed his head, um, uh, yesterday. We should uh, just point out, if you're a new listener to, uh, I mean, you might not realise that one of, uh, Ricky's many sexual peccadilloes, <laughs> I'm assuming it's a sexual thing, I can, can't justify it any other way, uh, is to just squeeze Carl's head. Yeah. Front I don't wise, know what it is. sideways. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's sexual or, you know, like when you've got a little kitten, you can't, you, oh, you want to squeeze his little face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, a little I puppy said that. I said before, squeeze a little lad. Yeah, exactly, and I, I feel that with you, because it's sort of like, it gives so much. Look at Carl's face, he mm. gives so much. It's like he, it is like he can understand what we're saying. Yeah. And that's what the connection is, I think, between me and, and, and Carl and other animals. <laughs> it's like he can um, understand what we're saying. But I squeezed it yesterday, and Carl went, I definitely had some crack. Yeah. Because I'm trying to see how hard I can squeeze it. Yeah, I think that was you just thinking, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. I think the cogs just started to... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think there is a danger, because I think there is a danger that you could, you could squeeze it too much. Yeah, I know. He did a good deed today, did, the other day, didn't you? Oh. Was it, yeah. What were you up to? You were just, uh, you were talking about, like, you know, being hassled in the street and stuff. Mm. And, uh, I get hassled a lot by the homeless. Uh, don't we all, don't we all? Um. <laughs> you go, you go home to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here, mate. But no, I, I, I do treat them a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Street them. I love that. You had a good day? Yeah. You've been good? Yeah. There you go. It's 50p. <laughs> Suzanne does the, uh, save the children thing. You were talking about, you know, charities hassling you all the time. Mm. She does that. Um, and I sort of say, well, you do that. I'll, uh, I'll look after You'll you. You'll take care of the homeless. I'll take care yeah. of the odd tramp around where I live. And how, and how do you treat them? Loads of different ways. 50p I might give them. Yeah. Or I might, I, I, you know, they'll sort of say, oh, have you got any money? I'll say, what for? And they'll go, I'm really thirsty. Mm. So I'll go, well, hang on a minute, and I nip and get them a little Diet Coke. Sure, a Diet Coke? Yeah, they they want to watch their weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going full fat. Oh, what an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To a, to a man like me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather treat them than, because a lot of people spend, spend money on, you know, problems abroad and stuff. Right. Oh, I God. just think, you know. Yeah, famine no, I'm, relief. I'm just saying. Oh, God. <laughs> like what? What do you mean? Like, famine relief? Well, you do get sick of it, don't you? You know I mean, it's that you get sick of. No, it. I'm wait, just saying. Wait, go no, on. I'm just. I know. Just let let whatever you do now, Steve. Don't interrupt because I'm scared. But I just think it's it's worth it. Mm. It's, it's, there's no, so no, many no. issues. There's freedom of speech. Yeah. There's we're not responsible. Yeah. There's he'll get away with it because he's a buffoon. <laughs> yes. And it is entertaining. Exactly. So, go so on, what's no, all I'm saying is you're what? saying you know do a tr who do I give me money to? Is it is it you know little you know sick kids or whatever or is it old people or whatever? Mm. HMV. That's uh, right, it's they get a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I just get sick of, uh, you know, problems abroad. It's like, what do you do? What do you do with the famine and that? What, what are you meant to do? How can you solve it? It's gone on for years. Yeah. And it just keeps going. We keep giving them money, they keep spending it. <laughs> and there's no, you're not getting any return for your cash? Well, it's just how, how many times, you know, they've got to learn. What do you mean they've got, they've got to learn? To learn? <laughs> what, are you going to teach them a lesson? What, what do you mean they've got to learn? What do, what do you mean? Well, what are they doing with it? 
Yeah, they, they must have like better interest accounts or something where you know look after, d get the, put the money in the right things. Sorry, do, do you think that Bob Geldof sort of writes him a check? He goes over and he's in the helicopter and there's there's millions of them, and they go is Geldof from Boomtown Rats. <laughs> Brilliant. Got, oh, oh, I hope if he, there's one man that can help us. Yeah, I hope he doesn't sing. He's not going <laughs> to sing. He's got some money for us. And he comes down and he goes, "They are. Do you want a check or do you take switch?" They go, "We don't take switch." He goes, "There's a check." They. They get he's things like again though, isn't he as well? I is mean, he? all right, you know, he used to work here, Bob. He's a lovely fella and that. But yeah, he's a lovely man. But how many times can you save the world? You yeah. know, he's, he's, he's over there again helping out, and it's like, well, you know, what do you do? Are you saying don't bother because it keeps happening? No, well, I'm not saying that. You know what I mean? I'm not daft. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl, you are <laughs> daft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just I don't know what the answer is. Do you know what I mean? So you're just saying wash your hands of the whole affair, leave them to it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Are you really just saying it's sort of, it's nature, it's tough luck, just don't interfere? Like a wildlife program. Is that what you're saying? Don't interfere. Are you basically just saying it's not my concern? <laughs> this has got a bit heavy. Can we do Cheeky Freak of the Week? It's <laughs> 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 My My Hey Hey Out of the Blue from uh, the album Russ Never Sleeps by Neil Young. Such a brilliant song. Oh, he's a great, great uh, musician. He's amazing. Yeah. He's incredible. I think we'll play a Neil Young track a week. Okay. From, from now until Christmas. <laughs> brilliant, okay. All right. Excellent. On XFM 104.9, I'm looking to be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We were talking about the homeless. Um, I saw a homeless guy in the week as I was walking down Finchley Road, and he was peering in the window of one of the, uh, uh Dixons or something like that, just checking out the details on one of those cable TV packages. <laughs> And I thought, one step at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you, firstly, I don't know, start eating your dinner off a plate. Yeah. And then work your way up to, you know, a house, a home, a widescreen yeah. TV, a roof. digital television. But uh, uh, it's odd. It, 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 well, that, 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 that might answer one of the questions. Cause I, I keep getting recognised by homeless people, mm -hmm. and I never know what to say. I go, oh, is your, uh, I think, well, uh, either they, they're not really homeless, and they've, you know, they, they, I don't know, they've got sort of digs or something, and they watch television, or the scariest one is that, they, they've become homeless in the last few months sure, since yeah. the office. And I think, oh God, that's really scary. Or they are watching it in Dixon's. They're going, the office is on tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, going out to Dixon's. Or they so, think so. you're one of them. Or that, well, I have. I mean, the way you dress. Well, no, I, some that are probably not quite, yeah, got their faculties, so maybe a little bit worse for wear, um, think they recognise me. And they, 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 old scenarios where they're going, remember we were chatting, I was going, yeah, yeah, how are you? How are you? And it's just they recognise someone. Right, yeah. But, but that, that's, yeah. That, that's a bit weird. But I mean, uh, I think that's the worst thing, homeless. I, 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 on a serious note, it is, outside health, I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking about charity and I don't know, I, I, I sort of, um, uh, got this stand or as well, I've been sort of like caught in the street. But the ones that I'd choose, I'd always think, Charity is what touches you. You can't change the world, but you can change your bit. So cancer, obviously, because my mum. So I give to cancer, and I think outside health, the next one must be being homeless because there's nothing you can do. It's yeah. it's got everything. It's you you're scared, bewildered, you're cold. Homeless. It's just everything. Even if you're healthy and homeless, eventually you're not going to be. But I just I do feel bad because you know I always feel that I want to give to uh, to the the health charities. Like cancer, for instance, because there's that fear that I might get it. Well, yeah, it's not just that. It's just like, yeah, if you're not healthy, they're, 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 that's the first thing, isn't it? If if your life if your life's being threatened, there's nothing else you can really worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know if that makes it wrong though that I'm sort of it's like I'm investing in a possible future. Yeah. Well, not really, because it's the same for everyone, isn't it? But um, you know. Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. I saw a homeless guy as well. Um, looking through the bins. But he wasn't pulling out food and scraps, he was pulling out newspapers. Just having a read. Yeah. I always always find that odd. I see that a lot, homeless guys. I don't know if they're just <laughs> checking out the T V listings. <laughs> 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 or when he finally gets it. When's the office cable? on? Yeah. Yeah, the office <laughs> they've moved it. They've moved it to Choice and uh UK Gold. I don't I mean I don't blame him because I mean there is some cracking stuff on cable T V. Uh, there's some great stuff. But I was flipping through the other day and on digital TV you you can see what other shows are on while you're watching something. I was flipping through and there was one and it was called Now when are you ever in the mood to watch a TV show called I Survived a Two Hundred Pound Tumour? <laughs> when was that on? 
<laughs> because it seems to me that if you've got a 200 pound tumour, you probably want to watch something else that'll take your mind off it, Big I'm Brother not, or whatever. I'm not 200 pounds. Well, I don't- I can't imagine what this is. A 200 pound tumour. I can't, it must have been an error. 200 pound tumour? It must have been a 200 pound tuna. <laughs> it yeah. was probably someone fell in the water. <laughs> yeah. And it came I in. I survived a 200 pound tuna. Yeah, and it was yeah. just a spelling mistake. Sure. A 200 pound tumour? That's like- isn't that like kind of having- That's Mr. Another T. Person. <laughs> that is another person. That is another person. Maybe- oh my god, maybe it was a- that it, all, all his life they told him it was a Siamese twin. <laughs> But yeah. someone had just painted a little face on yeah, it when, when he was, was at school. Just drawn a little face exactly, on it. Exactly, yeah. And they go, it's not your twin brother. I goes, isn't it? He goes, no, it's a tumour. We better take it off. It's two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. That for... can't be right. You sure it wasn't twenty pounds? I'm assuming that's what it, what it probably would have been. But I, it was certainly two hundred pounds on the digital thing. I, maybe that's a mistake. That's yeah. great, isn't it? They're trying to make it more interesting. Yes. Yeah. For someone at Carl got there, twenty pound tumour. Let's make it two hundred. <laughs> at least they're watched. Exactly. That's two... what I'd be like. Though I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to go to the doctors. You know what I'm like. I a two hundred pound tumour. I know. It's just that that thing. I mean, you know what I'm like. I don't like. Uh, it depends where it is as well. Taking your clothes off and all that. There's the pressure in it. You don't like anything being touched, do you? I, just I remember don't when like he said he, like he he doesn't check his balls. He doesn't like the feel. Mm. That's that's live with me. He doesn't like the feel. I, I think. Do you mean that you don't like what it feels like in your balls when you're fiddling with them? Because I imagined it that you meant you don't like the feel, i.e. Uh, in your fingertips, you don't like the feel of your balls. It's- it's the thing of, you start thinking about what you're actually touching, and there's something in there and you might break them and all that, I don't like it. Break them! I know, I'll look, I am scared with the little knobbly bits, yeah. What knobbly bits? <laughs> At the, uh, at the doctor's, it's that thing of, <laughs> it's not taking your clothes off in front of him, right? It's the way you've got to take your clothes off, <laughs> but you actually have to go behind that curtain to do it first. Yeah. So there's more pressure because then you come walking out with nothing on. Right. <laughs> so it's like, why do you have to go behind there? Yeah. Rather than, if I just sat there having a chat and he's going, so, yeah. how have you been? It's like, alright, and just taking the pants yeah, off and then exactly, yeah. the pressure what was the of- Don't take your clothes off and you came out and he, put, he lit a candle and there was <laughs> yeah. some soft music on. The lights were down. Do, 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 mm, nice. <laughs> yeah. do, to do, do, do. Or he said, if you'll make you feel more relaxed, I'll take my clothes off. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But I'll do it in the form of a striptease. Now, now, Carl, I'm gonna ask you the question, knowing the answer, what do you think of, um, maybe a gay doctor just checking his testicles out? He's a professional, he just happens to be gay. That He's... would never happen, would it? What are you talking about? Why not? Oh! Speaking of, uh... Go on. Shh. Doctors. Um, no. Gay what? people are not. Do you know when we discussed, <laughs> uh, gay-only toilets? Yeah. Mm hmm It's only, uh, it looks like it's coming into action. No, it doesn't. Right. No way. It was mentioned again. Where? On... Your head. No, I think Do you think on. that people in positions of power are listening to this show getting ad ideas from you? Tony Blair. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it really does. And, and the funny thing is, why are they getting upset? Why are gay people getting upset that they might have to have their own toilets? Carl, you don't know what you're talking about anymore. You don't you're know having what you're a about. sly look. You don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> okay, can we have Cheeky Freak after this? Thank you. On. Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. Steve, you're thinking of taking over as producer, aren't you? Well, I just think it's a shambles. I've asked for Cheeky Freak of the Week and it appears that Carl's not ready. He's not prepared. No, I can sort of remember it. It's just that I like to have contempt, all the information. Contempt, contempt for but the you've listener. you've just had about- oh, you've just had a whole bunch of adverts and placebo and it wasn't getting We're chatting, we're having a chat and that. Right, do you want to sort yourself out in the future? Yeah. Um, someone e- this is what we were chatting about. Someone emailed in about they watched the 200 pound tumour thing and, uh, um, when it was removed, um, it was carried away in a wheelbarrow, right? Carl said, what, even when she had it removed, she still carried it round in a wheelbarrow? <laughs> and he went, I thought it's sort of like she'd got become attached to it. <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you definitely are my favourite thing in the world. It's great. Look at the way he's looking back. But I think they're all the same. The people, I mean, I have had more emails about people saying I watched the 200 pound tumour And I shaved me arse. Than anything else. Than anything that, when we ask questions we come about up science, science Shakespeare. We, just, we talk, yeah, yeah. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Science. Science. Science concept, we talk about political issues. One person emailed in, they said, I tuned into the 200 pound tumour documentary, it looked disgusting, I couldn't watch for long. What were you expecting? Yeah. That it might sing and dance? <laughs> Do a little show for you? 
<laughs> oh, anyway, these, so what these are different... really your listeners, Carl. Now I think we've. Do you know what I mean? You you sort of you find your niche. You attract your. Uh, I think me and Steve are pretty much just here. I they, think the people that we had in the early days, Rick, they've long since abandoned us. They jumped ship. They've I got, really they've got jobs. Fans. Yeah, they've got jobs. They're out now. They've, they've been released. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting yeah. their life back together. Um, Carl, Come so on what's Carl. the situation with Cheeky Free? I've, I've, I've got like a couple of bits. Like I say, I haven't got the in-depth stuff that I know. Oh no, because usually it's, uh, you know, it's Heavily pretty scientific. Researched. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, do the jingle. We've got to move for a couple of the new one, haven't we? The Freak! Say chic. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, couple of, couple of bits. I don't know which one to use as the main feature for this week. <laughs> um, it's not good, is it? Well, there's been another one born. Uh, what? Little kid. You go on. Uh, four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Insult. <laughs> it's just a guy who wears glasses. Come on. Four, hour, uh, four eyes, uh, two noses, two mouths. That's weird. Isn't it? This bloke, did he also have two heads, two bodies? Sort of born, sort of slightly separately? He wasn't no. stood next to a mirror. No, no. It's weird, that, isn't it? That's all you've got. I love that. That's weird. That. Imagine if the doctor said that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Parks, um, kid's got four eyes and two noses. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Any clues? <laughs> Any clues? So well, that's that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. That's all the information. Well, you've I'll tell you got. what, no, that, no, that again, shouldn't be the main one. Okay, no, but, I'll answer but it. But like what? I say, this. What's the idea of this feature? What do I say all the time? Don't know. I always say, think about it. Think about what that would be like. <laughs> okay. What? Giving birth to him? It's no, no, no. Her. Be being, uh, I think it's a girl. <laughs> being like her. Two mouths. Four eyes. What would that be like? Mad, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know what this feature is. I don't know what's why. Is there another one? Is that, you said that I mean, too. I hope everyone took the opportunity <laughs> there during that silence to just think about what it would be like. I know I was. <laughs> she, could she talk with a mouthful? What? Is that allowed? Because she's got two mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be alright in her house? She'd be eating Yeah, one, she yes, can talk it? with one mouth and eat with the other, right, I well, suppose. listen, the main one, right, you've thought about that, that's good. The main yeah. cheeky freak of the week, I haven't got all the details. Smallest person ever. <laughs> right. What, how big would you say that is? Um, Carl is now sort of like holding his hands up like a fisherman, uh, long ways. That's about one foot. Right. Smallest, smallest man in the world. I, I printed the thing off and I can't find it. There's a little picture of him. Right. Uh, the odd thing was. But was why, why have you asked me how, did it say or was it a picture of him? I didn't really read it. Of course you oh, didn't. Oh, of course you didn't. Jesus. I just saw it and thought, oh, that's, that's What, you that's 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 assumed it was natural size? No, it was that big. But what do you mean it was that big? Little fella, like that. But why are you doing that? What, what? It was a page with a little fella. How do you know that was natural size? No, it was, because he said it's, it's world's smallest man. And the funny thing is, I, I remember, I've read the first line, I always read the first line, it said world's well smallest done. man. Well done, well done. The weird thing is, he got an head like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of it, apparently, I don't know if that's got anything to do with his shape uh, and size. Oh, but, uh, God. That, that big. His name's Mr. Watts. And, uh, the, the annoying thing is, what got me is, if you're that big, yeah. right, don't have your picture taken next to a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he having his photo taken next to a fruit bowl? Dunno. <laughs> Whoever the photographer was, obviously having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. At his expense. Cause you, you would just stand in the middle of nowhere, you'd look normal and that, but he was, he was stood there, <laughs> just leaning on an apple. <laughs> 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 Leaning on an apple. What is this? In what world do you have? No, it? This, this was, this was on, on the internet. <laughs> Leaning on an apple. Leaning on an apple. Was it Tom Thumb? <laughs> what is this? Are you sure it wasn't that some sort of sci-fi show they're advertising? No, no, it was, it was uh, a. <laughs> Leaning on it. Can you uh, sorry, Can you just lean on the apple? <laughs> just lean on the apple, man. <laughs> you mean if I were stand next to my chihuahua? <laughs> You're not taking the piss, are you? No, not at all. No. Could you? Would you mind leaning on this matchbox? <laughs> yeah. Leaning on an apple. And that's what, so he just said he's the world's smallest man leaning on an apple. Smallest man. Said about his head being like a light bulb, I don't know what, what that meant. And, uh, and I just thought, right, that, that'll do. That's that sort of cheeky figure of the week done. I think that was on like Monday. Right? I found that. I thought that's done. Printed it off. Forgot to get it off the photocopier. 
Someone's nicked it. Play a record. You got to. You know, it's just that. Oh, Steve. No, can I just say no, no point. Carl, please. No if point. I say let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week and you haven't done your research, you haven't got the information, just tell us you can't do it. But don't lead us on. Don't say this, in this on radio. radio. Hold your hand up to me and go, how tall is that? It's nothing. That's this is radio. nothing. It's nothing. Um, I, I think it was that big because he was leaning on an apple. It's not enough information. But, uh, imagine Trevor McDonald coming on going, some news, some stuff. Uh, how big's that? <laughs> How big do you think that is? Yeah. Because there was a fella, yeah, coming up after t Chris, more Chris Tarrant. It, it, Play record. I, I just, I'm, I'm angry. I'm actually angry. And I, if Monkey News is any way, in any way similar, <laughs> you've really pulled your finger out with that, have you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Let's have Rockbusters answers next. Supersonic, Oasis on XFM 104.9. Right, getting through it. It's the Rockbusters. It's the, the Rockbusters re results, really, because th this is um, and a very important result. It's whether uh, they uh, stay in the Premiership or are relegated. This is the playoffs for Carl. Okay? You need three points. You need three points to stay up, Carl. Go right. on. Right, the. Uh... There's a lot of right answers on that. Right, uh, okay. That's 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 in your favour. You you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first clue was uh, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took them off. He threw them away. Yeah. The initials T B. Yeah. Right. Go on. Toe knee Bennett. <coughs> All right. That's Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah. Okay, that's a warning. That's a yellow card. That is a yellow card, but you you can still get the points. Right. Uh. Because his name's not Bennett. <laughs> Tony, brilliant. Tony, perfect. A pun. Toe, knee. His name's Tony. Perfect. Bennett, no. His name's <laughs> Bennett. See. <laughs> well, is it? Is is in London this week as well? So, I don't know if it's sold out. I won't mind. Uh, are you on drugs, or uh, have you? Uh, did I actually crack your head? Did I actually give you some brain damage? Because you're worse than usual now. It's like, uh, go on. All right, the second one. Uh, that's Scottish fella. We've got to speed this show no, up. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I've just got to make sure it's right. We don't want to look stupid. Right? <laughs> that Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. I don't think we can look stupid with right. material like this. T T D. That Scottish monster's got a bit of a tan. The answer there. The darkness. I'll give you that. Right. Well uh, done. And the last one. Goal. Goal. Uh, the 60s singer, he had a attack the other way whilst, uh, having it away. You won't be seeing him again. The initials F N M. That's Faith No More. Adam Faith. Right. No! Doesn't count! Why not? Adam Faith No More. Right. Adam Faith No More? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is the clue? Is the clue Adam Faith, or is it Faith No More? Well, it's faith, I suppose. Just Faith No More. <laughs> the singer. So we got that. That's that. Safe for next week. What is the winner? <laughs> what do you make of it? You've got the deciding vote, Rick. Well, look, come on. I mean, you know my. I mean, it, wor it works. Faith No More, but he's mixed up what cryptic is and that because it start because the the fella. I mean, Adam Faith did actually die having it away, didn't he? Yeah. So it's all about him. It's all right. All the facts are right. Anyway. Uh, okay, I think he's got a reprieve. I think I'll give it to him. I think I've got to give it to him, oh. Steve. I think I have. He's, he actually pulled that out of the bag, that one. There's oh. no, there's no Jamaican fellas, no, seeing icebergs or, you know, Whitney Houston. The closest he came to is Bennett, Binnett, and I've got to give him, let him off that. All I've right. got to be a fair ref here. Well, fair, fair, fair enough. And well done to, you know, I'm always a fan of names that for some reason just, just strike me or tickle me. Yeah. And this week the lucky winner is, uh, Dave Suckling. <laughs> I, there's nothing, there's nothing amusing about that. <laughs> oh you dear. So, so one on to Dave Suckling. Okay. So, uh, well, Suckling wins it. Suckling takes the prize. He there. takes the prizes. And, um, well done to him. I guess there's more of that next week. And, um, we're fast approaching the end of the show, Rick. I know you are excited about that, as I'm Well, I know, but uh, you know, the best to come, because we've still got Bruce Springsteen coming up now, followed by Monkey News. Right, Monkey News. It's amazing. Bruce. What an amazing show this is. Shake it. Monkey News!
<laughs> uh, excellent. So, monkey news time on XFM. Carl Pilkington, the man in the hot seat. Carl, what have you got for us? Okay, uh, monkey news this week. Um, <laughs> we've covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we have indeed. Um, now, do you know, like, <sighs> there's places where you can go for, like, weekend rests and stuff, sure. and you can, you relax, you sit in a little spa, you might have a swim and yep. stuff. Mm. Well, they've got a place done for monkeys. Of course they have. Right? They can go there, they can they relax, forget about all the stuff they've got going on in their head. <laughs> they can have a manicure. <laughs> right. It's got nice meals. It's, it's not called a manicure, though, it's called a chimpacure. Beauty event. treatments. Yeah. Right? It's look good and stuff. Yeah, well, look good, feel good, yeah. Now, you might think, well, that's pretty normal. Well. The bit I haven't told you about <gasps> is it's actually run by a couple of chimps. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 it is, because think about it, right? <laughs> no, not think about it, what do you mean yes, it is? Of course it's not running by a couple of chimps. What do they do, get a loan? Right, if a chimp wants yeah. to have a rest, yeah. where would you go to? A place that's run by humans that don't, what, don't, they don't know what chimps' needs are. No! My point is this, how did they get it together? How did the two, what, two chimps, what, Mr <laughs> and Mrs Chimp, went for a loan and said, I don't know what we need, a spa? I think, I think it started off quite simple, right, just, uh, just, you know, basic, basic stuff. <laughs> well, it's expanded point. over time because it's become so popular. It's, it's gone mental down there. Sure. <laughs> Go! They've all heard about it. Now, the thing is, the problem is this, right? That isn't even the, the top and bottom of it, right? <laughs> Christ. The problem is, it's been going on and on and on, right? It's been, it's been earning a lot of money and stuff. The monkeys are happy. The monkeys that go there are loving it. They're telling friends and stuff. They're <laughs> all coming to it. Now, the, the problem is, it's this little, uh, little monkey, little man monkey and a little woman monkey, right? Yeah. They were sort of girlfriend and boyfriend. Sort of. <laughs> it's an open relationship, they can play around if they well, want. Well, the problem is, they're not married, right? <laughs> now, Some trouble brewing. the lad monkey, fella monkey, um, he's getting quite old. Mm. And the problem is, because it's his name that's down on all the, all the Carl, stuff. Carl, all I, the forms. I, actually, let him I finish. I'm getting scared now. Let him finish. Is his name on the business, and the problem is, is his missus is kind of like, what's going to happen? Sure. What are, you getting, this, where are you getting this from? What? Are you Internet. Carl, <laughs> I don't know where to start. No, this is the. Can, this is just, the, uh, can we this just hear the end? <laughs> this is ridiculous. So the problem is, the the the, the female monkey is worried that the male monkey is going to die. Happen? What's going to happen with the happen? business? What's going to happen? Of course. Right now. What do you mean the business? The 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 health that is spa. the business. It's a joke. The health Rick, spa. you're not listening. His name's on the form. <laughs> <laughs> the male monkey's name. It's in I, his name. Uh, the, now the problem is oh. the woman monkey has got some kids, but because they're not blood, blood relatives, it's not going to be handed down to them. And the court. Well, they're, they're kids from a previous monkey marriage. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that they're not going to get it. Um. Let me just check this out. Yeah, otherwise you got to check the facts, otherwise yeah. you could look like a twat or t spouting shit on the radio. Please check the facts for scientific security. And they're, they're just a bit worried because they're saying that the people in Ohio, which is where, they, where they've got the, the, uh, the little health thing going on. So that makes it more believable that it's Ohio. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought you meant it was Berkshire, in which it, case it would be rubbish. It looks like the local people are trying to get in there, they've seen the success of it. Sure. And they're they trying to go in and take it over and stuff. Yeah. So. Give me the piece of paper. Throw it away. Play a record. That's the worst, that's the worst one I've ever heard. And you are, there's something wrong with you. You're educationally subnormal. Final tune from us, Tim Buckley. Lovely song called Wings. Back next week? Yeah. Yeah. See you, Carl. Although you've spoken many times before